Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Fan Fiction. So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had Kyuubi's seal inside and awakens transformation power. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. The moon was full and shone bright like a silver sun. A hunter's moon is what shinobi call it. With moonlight that bright everything is visible, making a ninja's work easier. It's always more efficient for a shinobi to kill his opponent with less shadows. But tonight's hunter's moon brings no advantage or optimism, instead drains confidence and hope from the massive ninja force assembled in the forest. They can see every horror and destruction done to their beloved home. Trees over a hundred feet high snapped like twigs, wildfires circling smoking craters in the ground, and large chunks of stone scattered through the forest broken from the great walls of the village of Konoha. And the bodies, bodies of friends and fellow shinobi scattered about like broken toys flung about by a spoiled child. Hold the attack and wait for the fourth Hokage, a ninja yells to his men as they hold the last line of defense for the village. It's getting closer, don't let it near the village. Desperately throwing shuriken is all these ninja can do to the beast before them. The sound of metal slices through the air as shuriken spin and kanai fly toward the demon. But there is no sign that their effort is hurting or slowing the great beast as the razor sharp weapons bounce off huge orange fur. A normal beast would be no match for a Konoha shinobi, even the largest and strangest predators that can be found around ninja villages wouldn't stand a chance. But this beast is considered to be more a force of nature famous for destroying whole villages and nations. The nine-tailed fox demon is known throughout the ninja world as a legend, but everyone knows it's real. If you're lucky enough to see it and live to tell the tale your proof is in the damage it leaves. Mountains shatter under the swing of its tails, the rubble of buildings and homes can be found in its massive footprints. Whole coast lines have been washed away in the tidal waves this beast causes, and whole valleys have been carved into the earth with fox fire. Every shinobi knows and fears the same will happen to their beloved home. Nothing has ever stopped the demon before, and collectively the shinobi hold on to the one and only desperate hope of stopping the beast. Only one person crosses theirs minds that can possibly save them now. After all the fourth Hokage is a legend too, and he has accomplished many in the ninja world would have considered being impossible. Mastered legendary jutsu, ending a great ninja war, labeled, retreat on sight, by an enemy village, and created many unique jutsu unlike anything the shinobi world had ever seen. If anyone could face this demon Konoha's yellow flash could do it. RRRRRRAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
The toad summon's voice echoes through the forest as he jumps forward firing water bullets like a machine gun. The fox tries to dodge but each blast gets closer until two shots corner the demon and it jumps into the air to escape only to get blasted repeatedly in the chest. A satisfied smirk spreads on Bunta's face as he watches the demon soar through the air from the strength of his attacks. With a great crash the demon lands on its feet roaring its great anger and rage at the boss summons, and as it prepares to lunge a chain lashes out of the ground to wrap around the demon's throat. The fox growls out a startled bark and hisses in frustration as many more chains lash out and wrap themselves around the great kitsum, and as the last chain encircles its body they all suddenly pull the demon to the ground pinning the demon there. All the ninja can do is cheer and watch as the great monster is subdued by the hokage, and the sounds of those cheers reach the young hokage as he rushes through the air riding on top the massive toad's head. The happy cries gives him strength as he goes through the hand signs to perform his greatest and last jutsu ever, the reaper death seal. As the hokage reaches the last of the hand signs he focuses his mind and says his own goodbyes, this is it, for those I love, for the village, for the people, this is it, I am so sorry son to give you this burden and this pain but I believe in you, I love you. Gamabunta crashes to the floor landing on his feet but Minato Namikaze leapt forward continuing the momentum build up from the toad summons leap and rockets through the air like a missile homing in on its target. Holding his body straight as he rapidly approaches the struggling demon he roars his technique to the creature, the nightmares over demon. I summon thee, Reaper Death Seal. A look of horror can be seen in the fox's eyes as a brilliant flash illuminates the night and he looks on as time seems to slow down to watch this tiny human speed towards him with a shinigami soaring just behind his back. As Minato finally makes contact with the demon, he grunts in pain as the god of death reaches through his soul to take hold of the demon, and with power not born in the living world the shinigami tears the demon's spirit from its physical body. With the demon spirit and chakra being pulled through his body the Hokage begins visualizing the 8 trigram seal in his mind and forms each layer of the seal making the mechanism of the lock to perform just the way he envisioned it. The Nine's Tails was being defeated and it knew it, no, I refuse to end this here, not to a puny human neverrrrrr. And with one last swell of power the Nine Tails pulls the last of its strength and hatred through its Yuki Chakra and pulses the energy through Minato to attack the Shinigami. Both Hokage and Shinigami feel the burning pain of the Demon Chakra circulate through their bodies like acid and for a moment the God of Death loses hold of the Demon and Minato can only think of the pain. But conviction and duty returns to the Hokage's mind and the love for all those he was trying to save flood his system like a cooling salve as he takes a powerful hold on his jutsu again. With an angry grab the Shinigami tears the fox demon's spirit from its body, pulling that great mass of power into the fourth Hokage's body and forcing it into the shape of the cage made in the human's mind. One last great blast of light can be seen from a distance as though a sun was shining from the ground and with the last bit of his energy the fourth Hokage pushes his containment technique into the small crying blonde child on the stone ceiling a spiral pattern with Kanji onto his son's stomach. Serutobi and a few Anbu can only watch with a strange foreboding of dread and guess at what their Hokage was saying to the crying baby before them with his dying wife in his arms. They watched as tears spilled from the mother and a mountain of sadness can be seen on the face of the blonde shinobi genius while he has his only chance to give his son advice for life ahead. Looking down at the now limp and dead form of his red-headed love his body shakes just slightly as he looks over to Serutobi and says, My son is the hero today. Honor him. Serutobi slowly walks with the Anbu in tow up to still figure of their Hokage kneeling in the earth like a statue holding his wife and their baby like they were carved out of stone. The Anbu look on in sadness as they watch the third Hokage kneel down to close the fourth's eyes. Serutobi looks on his student's student with pride. Do not be sad, truly I have never before seen such a death becoming of a ninja as I have today. Our Hokage has given his life protecting his people and his home. And even as death has taken him from us, look at him. He died sacrificing everything for this village and still has a smile on his face. The Anbu all turn their masked faces to look on the fourth Hokage and burn this memory into their minds. He truly was smiling and even in death still gave off a sense of confidence and peace that only the fourth could inspire. As several of the Anbu leave to patrol the area they meet up with ninja scattered throughout the forest, and faster than any firestorm can travel the word spread out to all of Konoha.
The yellow flash and beloved fourth Hokage of the village hidden in the leaves, has died saving the village defeating the nine-tailed fox. And for the first time since the great shinobi war all the village was both happy to be alive and at the same time emotionally devastated at the loss of the most loved of all Hokages. As these floods of emotion course through the village, Serutobi the third Hokage looks down at the crying child and wonders. What kind of life shall you live now little one, what does destiny have in store for you? The child's wail loses strength and his eyes open to squint at the new world around him, and with a start Serutobi notices the crimson orbs with slits like a cat staring out. As the elder ninja picks up the child he also notices the faint whisker marks on his cheeks and chuckles. Well then Naruto Uzumaki, container of the nine-tailed fox spirit, I can see great things in your future, truly great. There that's chapter one, already things are different if just a little, but little changes can truly make a difference in the long run. Once again I do not own any media or character of the Naruto story, I am just a fan trying on a new spin on an amazing story so please don't sue me and stuff. Journal of Serutobi Hiruzen, presiding Hokage third generation. My previous tenure as Hokage has been reinstated for the last two years, ever since the night of the nine-tailed fox's defeat. The village, as I had expected it to, recovered well after the attack of the demon fox, dedicated shinobi worked tirelessly to both ensure the safety of our village and aid in its rebuilding. Aside from the obvious mourning the village went through after the loss of the fourth Hokage, village life continued on with an optimism that can only be bred from heroic deeds of the brave. The fourth's funeral was truly a sight to be seen, nearly every villager was in attendance bringing flowers or incense, and hundreds of candles lit the night like fireflies. The pain of loss was at the same time mixed with admiration for the fallen hero's deeds, already a hero since the great ninja war his death will immortalize him as one of the greatest Hokage and savior of the people. I don't believe that any that knew him will ever forget his greatness and I am confident our people will always keep his legend alive. Through the tough times of reconstruction and reaffirmation of our power as a hidden village I have met with some unexpected opposition from inside the village. Opposition isn't something new and to be expected at times, but the topic of how the child named Uzumaki Naruto is to be raised came up unexpectedly. The village council had called for an emergency meeting to discuss the sealing of the fox, or more to the point, to discuss the future of Naruto. Some to my amazement even demanded the child's death, Others cast their opinions that Naruto at least be secluded from the rest of the village, or even locked up like an S-class criminal. What disturbed me the most was the suggestion that Naruto be raised as a weapon of the village. What do you mean to say, Hotaru? The elder ninja adjusts his glasses as he looks to the aging Hokage. I would just like to empress upon the council that the child holds a calamity that is simply dangerous to be around. We cannot ignore the fact that we now have control over the power of a tailed beast which can be trained and be used for the betterment of the village. The counselor representing the village civilian merchants looks agitated at this, the demon can't be trusted, everyone will be in danger being around this thing while it is allowed to live. Hotaru looks over to the civilian, agreed, the safest and easiest way for us to ensure the protection of the village would be to precisely oversee the development of this Jinchuriki. Many other villages have shown that the training of Jinchuriki has added a powerful asset to their forces. Out of the corner of the third's eye he can see Danzo smiling, obviously happy at the direction this argument is going, here it comes, that old hawk has been up to his tricks again. And as if right on cue Danzo takes his opportunity to address the council, as it is clear to see, the boy is a threat to the village, but also a powerful asset not to be thrown away carelessly. As Councillor Hotaru has mentioned, Jinchuriki wield the power of the tailed demon, but only after proper training does this power benefit the village. This is why I recommend that we place Uzumaki Naruto into the custody of the Anbu Black Ops to ensure the safety of the villagers as well as a proper place to instruct the Jinchuriki to serve the Leaf Village. Serutobi's eyes narrow as he thinks on this new angle, yes, Naruto would become a strong shinobi with this training, but it would also give Yudanzo much more access to Naruto. What would you try to accomplish, more than likely you would try to influence him toward your philosophy of what a ninja's life should be. You would love to have an assassin with the power of the fox demon at your disposal. The council seemed to be leaning in Donzo's favor, except for the irrational fear the civilians couldn't seem to get over. But the demon is still in our village, it is safer for everyone that we kill the beast right away. Serutobi had heard enough, 
Stop the talk right now and everyone listen. A Jinchuriki is not a demon reborn as a child but a sacrificed child with a demon sealed within. Believe in the jutsu of the fourth Hokage who was a genius master of seals, the seal traps the nine-tailed fox inside the body of a child suppressing the creature's power. And yes the child like so many other Jinchuriki may be able to tap into the chakra of their demon. However, to my knowledge there has been no incident as of yet. Hotaru have you seen any evidence that would show the newborn has access to these powers? Hotaru frowns in mild embarrassment, no Lord Hokage, the newborn does not appear to have any demon chakra leaking out of him, but the physical characteristics of the child is concerning. The red eyes and whisker marks alone show the influence the demon has had on the child already, we may see him acting more and more like a demon in the future. Sarutobi can barely contain his smirk at hearing his chance to steer the conversation back in his favor. Yes a very good point, Naruto already has some to the fox's characteristics but no current signs of the demon's power, but seeing that there are so many bloodline limits in our village I believe his features will be overlooked. Some may think that he is a relative of the Inazuka, and until the child starts showing signs that the demon has taken control of him then I believe we should treat him as what he is, a small, harmless, orphaned child. Keeping control of the tempo of a topic is the key to politics, Serutobi pauses just long enough for his words to absorb and continue talking before anyone can object. And to ensure that Naruto has a chance to grow up without the knowledge of the demon inside him I am enacting a new law by edict of the office of the Hokage. From this point in time no one who has the knowledge of the nine-tailed fox sealed inside Naruto can speak this knowledge to Naruto or anyone his age. Even speaking of this secret shall be considered a capital offense. Gasps of surprise fill the room as counselors look at each other in shock at this declaration. Serutobi has shown in the past that he will always listen and find a diplomatic solution, but he has also shown that he can get dead serious when it comes to his decisions as Hokage. And in the interest of village security and to ensure that no child hears of this secret, no person shall even speak of the sealing of the nine-tailed fox in public or private. The violation of this law and punishment shall be carried out by the Anbu Black Ops, I will be assigning this permanent mission to the court to ensure Naruto's safety and care under the authority of the office of the Hokage. The matter was closed after I had made my decree, I could tell that no one would question my authority on the matter, and I know many were not happy. While the council and especially the civilians would have sided with Danzo with any decision to control Naruto, no one has the authority to deny an executive decision. And with the Anbu under my command to look after Naruto's safety it would be difficult for Danzo and the civilians to retaliate against the boy. But I now know that I must be careful what I do with Naruto politically, too much support for the boy will bring dissent against me and the council will turn against my position as Hokage. It saddens me greatly to know that ignorance and fear will be Naruto's greatest enemy here at home. Village business continues on with budget issues being the most difficult, Maybe I can get more funds from the Fire Lord if I include several more Jonin to the Capital Operations Unit. He does complain that I use his mission lists to train my Chunin and Genin, such allegations would look very bad for a Hokage's decision making if not for my absolute faith in the ninja selected for each mission. Though to be honest, many of the feudal lord's requests can be taken care of by our ninja who need the training and life experience. The Lord's wife alone pays consistently more genin salaries than most D and C rank missions. Which reminds me, I have to go issue genin teams their missions in 10 minutes and there is the perfect team on my mind that can benefit from chasing a cat today. Slash. Four years have now passed since the sealing of the Nine Tails and much has happened. Our village continued to have bad diplomatic relations with the village hidden in the clouds, the worst incident to note was the false peace agreement between Cloud and Leaf. A well-respected Jonin of the Cloud was sent to negotiate and sign the agreement, but he used the summit to gain access to the Hyuga compound and kidnap Hiyashi's daughter. Luckily the child wasn't taken, but of course the Cloud decided to use the incident to cause trouble over the death of the kidnapper without taking any accountability for the attempted kidnapping. By threatening open conflict they demanded the body of Hiyashi, a life for a life is an age-old ninja diplomacy tactic designed to even the odds between forces. The intentions of the hidden cloud to steal bloodline limits from the families of our village are very clear and all encounters with them in the future will be strained for certain. Another issue that has caused me some headaches has been finding suitable living situation for Uzumaki Naruto. 
I was surprised that not one family volunteered to adopt the child, and even the orphanage has given me issues with caring for the boy. Lord Hokage, please I'm begging you to take Uzumaki out of here. The pleading face of the Konoha Med Corps nurse was a familiar sight greeting him at the entrance to the local orphanage. The Leaf Village Orphanage had been a necessary addition in the early years of the village, after all in a village full of ninja it is expected that there are going to be a few orphan children whose parents were killed in action. The children were well taken care of, looked after by the most compassionate of our medical ninja and teachers. Tell me Sake, what has Naruto done this time? He got into another fight with the other boys. The children were all playing outside and Naruto stole the ball everyone was using and he popped it. Some of the boys did start the fight but Naruto bit some of them and broke little Naoto's nose, then proceeded to severely beat and claw Ryu and Takahiro with those nails of his. The children have always been afraid of Naruto but now, some children are so terrified they can't sleep at night with nightmares of a child their own age. This is not good at all Sake, the last time I had a talk with Naruto obviously didn't go as well as I had hoped. But what would you have me do, there is no other place for me to put the boy. No one will adopt him and he is simply too young to live on his own. But Lord Hokage, you and I both know that Naruto is more developed than most children his age. Remember that he was walking at just two months old, speaking at six months, and pretty much able to take care of himself at a year old. I've even seen him reading scrolls and books too advanced for a child his age. The third Hokage's eyes narrow at this information as Sake continues her plea, and as for his safety, the Anbu already make regular patrols to check on the boy throughout the day, if he lived on his own in an apartment somewhere he would be fine. All I can ever get him to eat is meat and noodles, and both he makes on his own. To be honest, the only time I've seen him even look remotely happy is when he is alone. HMMMN, the Hokage's forehead furrows in thought as he puffs on his pipe. Could living on his own calm Naruto down? he seems to dislike those around him causing him to be violent to his caretakers and peers. I don't doubt that he is responding to the lack of a family's love and the treatment from all the other villagers. Even with the law in effect protecting Naruto from learning the truth, the body language and looks the Anbu have reported seeing the boy receive is sure to be causing much of Naruto's ire. Very well Sake, I am interested in the welfare of all the children here. The children are obviously unable to progress while in fear of Naruto and Naruto isn't going to learn to get along with people if he is attacking them all the time. Well at least until he is old enough to go to the academy. A quick gasp escapes Saki's lips. You mean you're going to let him become a ninja? Sarutobi notices an intense fear widen in her eyes. The boy is more like a wild animal than a human, it would be insane to purposely make him more dangerous. Well, you know very well that we never turn away anyone especially orphans who want to attend the ninja academy and it just may be in Naruto's blood to become a ninja. The Hokage takes another pull off his pipe and turns to Sake. I will take Naruto now, and I will send someone for his clothes and things later, please go and get him Sake. Bowing deeply a very grateful Sake excitedly declares, thank you very much Hokage-sama. That day I took Naruto from the orphanage and found a small apartment that's rent was cheap and won't strain any of the funds from my budget. I couldn't lavish on Naruto, it would give fuel to political fires against my protection of him. I can only hope that living on his own will make him want to interact with the people of the village, and hopefully make some friends with the children. Though honestly there is some concern in his behavior, when showing Naruto his new home he just silently walked around the apartment. He said nothing and stood with his back to me staring out the window as I explained to him the rules of living on his own and where to go to get food out of the money he would be given every week. Out of all the people in Naruto's life, I am the only constant person who has been around him from the beginning. However, despite my presence Naruto has shown no affection for me or anyone. I can see respect from Naruto when he looks at me but he never speaks unless spoken to or asked the many ridiculous questions of a child as if he has no youthful curiosity. At Naruto's apartment while he stared out the window I told him that when he turned six he can enroll in the ninja academy. I explained that many people in our village have found meaning and pride serving the village out of the lessons of ninjutsu. But as always he remained silent. Even as I left he said nothing and as I made my way to head back to my office I hear a most disturbing sound. It wasn't like anything I have heard before, 
like a shriek and a roar combined. And the sound came from Naruto's apartment. I sent my Andu assistant to check the window but Bear only reported that Naruto was running around the apartment jumping on the bed and walls. I was finally glad to see some emotional reaction but whether or not it is a positive one is yet to come to surface. I am sad to even come to the realization that maybe it will be important to have the Anbu take special care to report any and all strange behavior from Naruto so I can start assembling a psychological profile on him. From there I can determine if there are any traits that may have been influenced by the fox sealed inside him. I am sure the seal still holds the demon at bay, but if there is any influence from the fox in Naruto's mind then it must be taken care of. Perhaps it's time to send for Jiraiya to come examine the seal on Naruto's stomach just to see if we can better understand what the interplay is between the boy and the demon. Official business of the village has continued progressively, our survival of the Nine Tails Fox attack has increased our reputation in the ninja world and increased the amount of requests for missions coming into the village. The continued revenue streaming into our home will make the coming years very prosperous for us all. Slash. I find reading back in my journal that I have noticed a trend when I report my thoughts on Naruto's progress. Two years have passed since I gave Naruto his own apartment, and in two years Naruto has developed into a village pariah and nuisance. The Anbu reports have given me many examples of Naruto's general behavior around the village and its people. My initial worries concerning Naruto was his ability to take care of himself, would he know where to go shopping, could he cook without burning down his home or clean up after himself. Basic human functions that a normal child would have parents to keep track of and of which Naruto must learn by himself. Those concerns seem trivial now since the reports showed that he had no problem finding the markets, though the problem was convincing many of the merchants to sell to the boy. He's even been seen preparing his meals and keeping relatively clean, although Naruto's idea of a meal seems to be instant noodles and raw meats. And the boys decorated the apartment strangely. Pillows of different sizes are thrown about ringing the walls and filling the floor like the nest of some large lazy bird. My concerns are no longer lingering on Naruto's apartment but now his interactions with the rest of the village. Finding merchants willing to let Naruto buy from their shops was initially the first difficulty. Whenever Naruto went out to shop merchants would yell at him to get away, some would even throw things at the boy. The Anbu had to step in from time to time to calm things down because as soon as anyone would treat Naruto poorly they would receive the wrath of a small four-year-old blonde. He would attack anyone, grocery clerks would have apples and melons thrown at them, or people walking by that would dare to glare at the boy were kicked at and scratched. Sometimes the Anbu have seen Naruto with signs of taking a beating or two, and judging from the reactions my reports have shown me most if not all of the civilian population have shown him the same kind of treatment. Parents warn their children to stay away from the whiskered boy with the red eyes and wild blonde hair. And over the years from both the Anbu warnings and Naruto's outbursts of anger and violence has trained the people to avoid the child altogether. I am sure that this treatment is the cause of Naruto's continued lack of social skills. The only chance that I can see anything changing his behavior could be starting the Ninja Academy. A place where a chunin can take control of situations that get out of hand and Naruto will be forced to interact with children his own age. But his chances of becoming a ninja of the village may be in danger due to his recent actions. After the villagers began avoiding Naruto a new behavior came from the small boy. Now small accidents around the village have become a recurring problem, and Naruto has been to blame. These accidents in one way or another have been pranks put together by Naruto to attack the villagers. While most children Naruto's age are prone to pull pranks, his have bordered on the criminal. If Naruto doesn't start focusing his energy on his future instead of his campaign to aggravate the villagers he may be barred from the whole ninja program. And protecting the boy will be much more difficult. Dropping the pen next to his journal Sarutobi looks out the window, that reminds me, Naruto's check is ready and the last courier asked not deliver to him again which gives me a chance to visit with the boy and give one last bit of advice before he attends the entrance ceremony at the academy. Dog, as soon as the word left the Hokage's lips the silver-haired Anbu captain appeared with a puff of smoke as if he had been standing there the whole time. Where is Naruto located at this moment? The spiky-haired Anbu's stance became even more lax as he scratches the back of his head. In the last five minutes my update said he was spending the afternoon on top of the Hokage monument and is there now. 
After issuing a few orders and putting on his cage's hat Sarutobi walks from his office to the base of the mountain steps and begins the long climb up to the observation level on top of the Hokage Monument. This walk always brings memories back from the early days when Sarutobi was a fresh out of Academy Genin. These steps leading along the mountain give the best vantage to view the village and give anyone who stands here the feeling of being a Hokage watching over their home just like the cage stone faces. Sarutobi's old bones finally make it to the top and he narrows his eyes in the dying sunlight looking for the signature shock of blonde hair. Then on a stony spike on the head of the fourth Hokage the blonde boy could be seen crouched down staring out at the village. Hello there Naruto, enjoying the view. As the third Hokage walks the last couple of feet to where Naruto as the boy merely turns his head to peek one red eye back to glimpse at the cage before turning back to the village. Sarutobi takes in a deep breath of air and relaxes as he exhales taking in the view. The air is so clear and fresh up here isn't it Naruto, no smells from the village make it up here at all. Naruto's only reaction is a quick sniff giving no indication he is going to be chiming in at any time. You know when I was a boy the same age as you I stood up on this mountain gazing out at the village dreaming of the possibilities. GRRHHMMFF what possibilities, like whether or not to jump off the mountain or pee over the edge hoping to hit someone. Naruto smirks at his joke just enough to show his sharp teeth glint in the fading sunlight. Oh no nothing like that, just what possibilities there were for me growing up in this ninja village. By growing up here I had the opportunity to find meaning for my life by giving it direction. Naruto rises to his feet standing straight but continues to stare out at the village as the Hokage continues to speak. The Hokage gave me inspiration to really push myself through my studies and hard work to becoming a ninja. I dreamed of the great deeds and heroic adventures that many ninja from this village told and I knew that was the path my life would follow. My love for this village and my home has been the fire pushing me to better myself and help me find meaning in my life. You see Naruto, the will of fire is inside me as it is in the ninja of this village. And each person who walks the path of the shinobi needs to ask themselves what it is out of life that we want and makes us happy. In the ninja world we learn to control the power within us and through chakra we feel a profound connection to both nature and each other. Depending on how much training you put into something will depend on how much skill and control you will have. Crossing the last few steps between them Sarutobi puts a warm hand on Naruto's shoulder. I believe Naruto that you have a great power within you that will give you an edge to achieve the goals of your life. The only question left is what do you want Naruto, and what do you have to do to get there, and what do you want to become? I'm not asking you this for an answer, these are actually questions you need to ask yourself. Naruto's clawed hands clench as his frown deepens listening to the aging cage. The sun is just about gone as the Hokage turns to walk away and calls back, the entrance ceremony for the academy is in two days Naruto, I would be proud to see you there. Naruto's eyes train on the cage until he walks out of view back down the steps to the bottom of the mountain. Looking back out at the leaf village his eyes take in the trees and neighborhoods as the memories flash back. Fire everywhere, whispering voices in the streets as the eyes stare with hate, bodies strewn about with broken stone and mortar of destroyed buildings crushing some. Dot dot. Blurry visions of unrecognizable images with the disturbing feeling of needing to stretch your limbs but nothing responds the way it should like miswired limbs, looking up at the world feeling so small and everything else suddenly huge. Dot dot, whispered words of demon, 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 the feeling of life and power leaving the body as the world goes dark and the sensation of falling and getting smaller and smaller, waking slowly and prying heavy eyes open to blinding light and finding no strength. A mirror with a blonde boy starting back and not recognizing the face but staring at the eyes and seeing a familiar red stare back. RRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
trapped in the body of some lowly weak little human piece of trash that doesn't even have the strength to escape this place. I don't understand what has happened to my power. I know that the seal on this stomach contains my chakra and spirit, the fourth Hokage's jutsu would have trapped me just like inside Kashina, but now it's different. My mind is free and the human's body is mine to command like it was my own, no, not like me own at all. I remember having to relearn everything and how damn frustrating that was. Opening my eyes to find that I was a human infant with all those foul humans touching me. I couldn't lash out with my tails, or clamp down with my jaws, I have neither. Naruto's rage becomes too much and he lunges out slashing at the stone likeness of the fourth Hokage's hair. The claws on Naruto's hands rake through the stone for an inch before cracking and splitting several claws down the middle spilling blood. Holding his hand to his face Naruto stares as the blood falls. Still so weak, these boulders would have been dust under my paws. I must find a way to escape this prison, but how, at least being sealed inside a human would have given me the chance to push my will through my chakra. This time I don't feel any of my chakra, as if it isn't there at all. With the nimbleness of a fox young Naruto takes three jumps and lands on the very tip of the highest spike of stone hair on the Yondiami's head in a crouch, the village now darkening with the twilight dying out. There is an answer to this problem and the answer is always found in the chakra, power and life, the key to both is chakra. Every being has it, and I am made from a well of chakra that does not end. So the answer to my problem has always been the same, with control of my demon chakra I could escape this human body and reform my true self. But the only chakra I can feel is this lowly human's chakra, and it feels no more powerful or larger than a drop of water on my skin. In one moment life can change dramatically for anyone and anything. A tree falls in the forest and provides light for a seedling to grow into a massive chakra oak. A man chooses to turn left instead of right down the street and meets his future wife walking out a door instead of walking down an alley into death's arms. And a person who has an epiphany in that one moment opens a new path of clarity and direction they never knew existed. At this particular moment the nine-tailed fox had a thought that brought something he never thought he ever needed, hope. So the Hokage of this village wants me to choose some goals for this human life, all right I will concede to his advice. Chakra is the answer to my problems, and humans have been known to control the power of the biju in the past. So third Hokage, you ask me what I want, I want to escape this pathetic human existence. What do I have to do to get that goal? The only way to learn to control my chakra is going to have to be the human way through the ninja academy. I will have to put my pride to the side and stomach the smell of those disgusting children in that stuffy school, but I'll still make them bleed. Then going through the academy is the only way to learn secrets in chakra that the scrolls and books in that place known as library cannot teach me. So I will use the human's knowledge to ultimately bring about their destruction and finally get my revenge on all that this village has done to me over the decades. And the final answer that plagues these humans for most of their lives will be the answer to my imprisonment, what do I want to become? With a mighty intake of breath the Kyubi filled his human lungs and thunders out his true thoughts for the first time to the village hidden in the leaves. What I want is to become what I once was, I will gain back my unlimited power and crush this pathetic village and everyone in it as I should have done years ago. I will show the world my power as I am resurrected as the nine-tailed fox. With eyes full of hate the Naruto no Kitsune's eyes glow red and bellows out, I will kill you all one day, I will kill you all, believe it. So there's chapter 2, a whole lot of filler but if you're a fan of the Naruto cartoon you should be used to it by now so stop bitching. My writing style is a bit strange but that's normal until I get into the flow and language of writing. Anyone who has decided to favorite or mark this story has earned my eternal thanks and will live forever, but check the fine print on the immortality since some restrictions apply. Like I said in my profile I have a ton of notes on upcoming chapters and just have to rough out the chapters so updates should come soon. Unless that blonde at Winston's in Obe, California calls back again then expect delays on updates. Oh and please read and review, even if you want to rip out my guts and flame on my story, I can take the pain. Next time, will Kyubi Naruto or whatever the Nine Tails wants to call himself be able to survive life in the academy? and what kind of pranks would a demon reborn as a child pull on unsuspecting villagers and teachers. Village life starts early in the morning as the warm sun breaks through the still cold air of the previous evening. 
The citizens of Konoha slowly start going through the motions to begin their day adding noises that mingle softly with the breeze moving through the trees in the village. Serene would be the word to describe the frequent beautiful mornings in the village quite literally hidden in the leaves. But not this morning, like many other mornings over the years this one will shock villagers from their beds to rush to an open door or window to find the source of the commotion. The villagers of a ninja village are used to all sorts of peculiar sights and sounds, for each citizen knows the risks of living in a military stronghold. Depending on what kind of situation or emergency each villager knows what kind of actions they need to go through for their safety. Emergency and compliance drills have been in practice since the days of the first Hokage to protect all non-ninja villagers giving Konoha citizens a sense of security and peace of mind despite dire circumstances. Over the years there have been more than a few ninja born and trained in the village that many would consider to be eccentric, odd, or downright weird and have gotten used to these oddities. Many can remember the pranks of young ninjas or even the old and famous like the Sanin Jiraiya being known for their strange behaviors. Though embarrassing and sometimes slightly mean these pranks have always been viewed as just the quirky natures and mental defense mechanisms of their ninja. That has changed. Fear and worry now fill the villagers' minds when odd noises go bump in the night. Anything out of the ordinary will make those who have been the targets of these new pranks jump in terror and worry about their homes, livelihoods and very lives. V boom m m m m m b o o o o m m m g g g g m m m pop pop hang pop v r r a a a a c k v r r a a a a c k b o o o o o m m m at the sound of the explosions the shocked citizens rushed to their windows dropping whatever they were doing or tearing themselves from their beds to find out what has happened. Merchants leave their shops and stands and flood the streets to find the cause of the thunderous explosions. What the hell? Are we under attack? What was that? Who has done this? Are the questions running through the villagers' minds in the few seconds after the explosions rock through the village. And then they see it. Eyes widen in shock, mouths open in horror and eyebrows narrow in anger as the citizens of Konoha take in the sight of the smoking and now scared visage of the Hokage monument. Screams can be heard in the distance where the smoldering and crumbling stone was raining down on the buildings and homes under and near the mountain. Like all monuments of villages and cities the great stone faces of the Hokage stand as a reminder of legendary heroes and their great deeds accomplished in the name of the village. The monument stands as a symbol of the past and is significant to the moral and identity of the ninja of the village hidden in the leaves. As the smoke from the blast clears stones can be seen falling like hail and crashing to the ground and into the surrounding buildings. All eyes watch as the damage to the Hokage faces can now be seen and take in the new look the explosions have changed the cage into. Each explosion has left a jagged black hole or scar in the stone. The first Hokage's nose can be seen smoldering the second's mouth blown apart making a big O, the third's hair blown away making the stone visage look more like Cage's currently bald head. But the fourth's was the worst, both eyes and mouth blasted away with deep red paint dripping out of he holes like blood. It's a sight none will soon forget, however, in a village inhabited by a large population of warriors the feelings of horror, fear, and despair quickly dissolve as training kicks in. Minds focus on what needs to be done, and many ninja are seen as mere blurs running and jumping into action taking to the rooftops or bounding between buildings. As the village seems to come to life as ninja are heard running by, all thoughts turn to catching the culprit. Minds race with who could be behind this attack, a ninja village naturally has many enemies. Other ninja villages could attack at any time, or rogue ninja with a grudge against the leaf, even ninja from their own village have been known to turn crazed and attack their own home. But even with all those other possible enemies nearly everyone in the village can be heard voicing the same thought on who is responsible as they all yell out the suspected culprit's name. N-A-A-A-R-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-T-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O can be heard in almost perfect unison bouncing off the great walls of the village. Soon the sounds of sprinting footsteps can be heard over the rooftops, and the many accusing villagers can see a ragged orange and blonde silhouette being closely chased by Leaf Ninja. Naruto, hold it right there, yells one ninja reaching for the blonde only to grab air as the boy pivots on his foot quickly changing his direction and continues jumping from building to building. Another ninja rushes up to intercept Naruto, you've crossed the line for the last time Naruto, with his arms wide the ninja lunges in, 
but Naruto dives under his grasp and continues racing across the rooftops just out of reach. Turning back mid-jump Naruto's red slit eyes glare back at his pursuers. H-A-H-A-H-A-A-H-A-H-A, just give it up meat sacks you can't catch me. Narrowly dodging each ninja Naruto's loud laughter bounces off the walls and streets of the village. Over ten ninja and even a few Anbu black ops can be seen in hot pursuit, but many know that Naruto is fast and has evaded capture before. Knowing this the ninja try to herd Naruto into a trap down an alley like they have in the past. Naruto lands on the street continuing his momentum forward and jumps down the alley with two ninja following. Instead of hearing Naruto's capture a couple of loud pops can be heard in the alley as explosive notes detonate and the loud crash of the pursuing ninja getting caught in their own trap. On the fence that Naruto and the ninja had just passed a moment before a square panel of fabric that looks just like the fence drops as the blonde steps away from his hiding spot. Ha 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 ha, none of you loser ninja can catch me, Naruto says with a sneer on his face as a shadow moves to shade over him from behind. Oh yeah Naruto, a very loud voice thunders right into Naruto's pointed ear making him jump and stumble. Naruto's red eyes widen in surprise at being caught once again by the same chunin that has ruined his fun for years now. Baruka, Naruto's eyes narrow as a sneer spreads across his face, what are you doing here, Baka? That last part sounding like it was spat out. With his hand on his hip Baruka's eyes narrow as the vein on his head pulses as he steps into his lecture stance and points at Naruto, no, what are you doing here causing a village-wide panic when you're supposed to be in class, and you address me as sensei? HMPH, who needs your stupid class if I can outrun every lame ninja in this stupid village, including you, Naruto crouches to take off again when another familiar voice freezes him in his place. Not another step Naruto, turning his head Naruto looks at the familiar sight of the silver-clad Anbu captain wearing the dog mask with red stripes flanked by six other Anbu. Looking at who he was now dealing with Naruto's stance relaxes as the black ops ninja circle him. Lord Hokage has requested your presence so you can explain your actions to him, you're coming with us. Dog turns towards the Hokage tower and the other Anbu move into an escort pattern with monkey and bear holding onto Naruto's arms as all leap to the rooftops. Wind flowing through his hair and the holes through his stained orange clothes Naruto looks down at and hear the villagers applaud the Anbu and scream at him. Words like demon and monster reach his ears and some even call out to the Anbu to just kill him. Hearing this Naruto's smile spreads across his face as he thinks, Ah your anger and hate delight me pathetic humans, but it is not enough, I want to see in your eyes what you used to have when you looked up at me, fear. As the group closes in on the Hokage tower Naruto's eyes narrow in thought, Now, what is this little bit of fun going to cost me this time old man? Backslash the Hokage's personal office is a familiar sight to Naruto, as the village prankster and troublemaker he has been called in and escorted by the Anbu many times. The room is large and open with the Hokage's desk and large chair close to the back of the room where the third practices his calligraphy. Naruto notices that the calligraphy panel he must have been working on this morning was incomplete with a large line slashed across the paper. Naruto smiles at his thought. I must have interrupted your concentration with all those paper bombs this morning. Sarutobi's eyes narrow at seeing Naruto's smile, what is so funny Naruto Uzumaki, indulge me in what you are thinking right now. Naruto crosses his arms and smirks, I was just thinking that you may have had a heart attack this morning, the calligraphy looks like it's drooling back there. Ah, well you see Naruto, the third Hokage pauses to take a puff on his pipe, I was relaxing this morning after finishing some arduous amount of paperwork. Sarutobi leans forward standing up and walking around his desk to stand in front of Naruto, and all of a sudden I hear a commotion so loud that my first assumption was that we were under attack. Then, when I had reached the window to see the cause of the noise I discovered a shocking sight. Leaning forward the Hokage's face was inches from Naruto's dirty whiskered face. I see the Hokage monument has been attacked by paper bombs and immediately I order a squad to search and capture or kill whoever was responsible for this. And considering all that you have done to the village and its villagers you are lucky that it was Aruka that found you and not anyone else, otherwise I may have had to worry about your safety as well. Raising an eyebrow Naruto snorts before saying, like any of the villagers have the guts to take me out, they can't even walk near me or look me in the eye. 
Puffing on his pipe the aging Hokage walks to the window before he continues, you may find that there is only so much that anyone can take Naruto. Up to this date you have made numerous pranks that have bordered on the criminal, in fact had your explosives been any weaker they would have created large boulders that would have fallen onto the village. Your bombs were so strong the stone was almost completely vaporized, if any serious damage had occurred you would have been arrested and thrown in jail. At this Naruto leans back crossing his arms over his tattered orange jacket and looks to be in thought. No one died, next time I've got to do a little more research on those explosive notes, so strange that I can get a better result with less power, now if I had some fox fire. Walking back to his desk the third Hokage opens a thick envelope labeled Uzumaki and looks up taking in Naruto's appearance. Standing there with an air of arrogance and mild annoyance the twelve-year-old really looked like hell. Wild hair with a look like it has never been combed, tattered orange jumpsuit ripped and torn and with what looks like old dried blood caked on the sleeves and shoulders. It's moments like this when I worry what kind of influence the fox has had on his mind, Serutobi slowly opens and sifts through the incident reports as he thinks on Naruto's life. All of your, pranks, have been documented, and each one has been worse than the rest. Sitting back in his chair the third continues, just to name a few. When you were out practicing your shuriken jutsu on training field 3 you were bullied away and even had kanai thrown at you. You reacted by setting a trap that would fire shuriken at whoever was practicing when they hit the center of the target. Naruto chuckles at this. Turning to another page the Hokage continues, when you were kicked out of the hot springs you damaged public property and redirected the local sewage line to run into the public baths. A wide smile stretches across Naruto's face at the memory of screaming people running from the public bath covered in from head to toe in their own shit. And when Mizuki failed you from last graduation you did something that simply baffled me, looking up from his paper at Naruto his ire rises as he watches the boy laugh loudly. Oh come on, even you have to admit that that was funny. Naruto, Mizuki could have died. I don't even know how you got your hands on tiger pheromones to spray Mizuki with an even more unbelievable as that you actually got a tiger into his apartment. Naruto loses it at this point and laughs his almost maniacal laugh, Bwah ha 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 ha, he was screaming for help and no one wanted to go in because of the sounds the tiger was making and he ended up running out his door with no pants and claw marks on his back. Bwah ha 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 ha, slam. Serutobi is suddenly standing and has slammed his fist on the table leaving a noticeable dent and yells at Naruto. And this time your actions are by far the worst ever, I was lenient in punishing you before because you reacted to people treating you badly and there is no amount of public service that will equal in penance for what you've done. Naruto clenches his fists as anger twists into his face and stares down the furious Hokage. This time Naruto you have attacked the village without provocation damaged a historical monument and not only insulted the memories of my teachers and friends but every other ninja in this village. Acts of which are punishable by expulsion from the ninja academy and maybe even imprisonment. At the mention of expulsion a slight sign of alarm can be seen through Naruto's angry eyes. You can't expel me, I'm going to graduate this time and actually learn real ninjutsu. Walking back over to stand in front of the blonde the aging Hokage stares down the boy. No. I don't think that you could become a ninja Naruto, not now and maybe not ever. A ninja does not only work for their village but most of all protects it. This is our home Naruto, each ninja lives, works, and dies for the village and all who live here. Remember the first day you came to the academy and what it was that I said to you as I welcomed you. Barely controlling his rage Naruto thinks carefully, if he takes me out of the academy then I won't receive any more training on how to use this human chakra. I haven't learned how to control it properly yet, and I haven't felt any of my true chakra or learned anything at all on how to release myself from this tetragram seal in this human existence. I have to answer his question carefully or else I may lose my chance at freedom. The third watches Naruto as the boy is obviously deep in thought and waits patiently until a look of recognition is seen in his eyes. You spoke of the will of fire, and how each and every ninja must discover it for themselves and use it to become our strength. Surprised Serutobi raises an eyebrow and moves back to sit behind his desk and absently stare into the crystal ball in the middle of the table. Naruto, I might have been wrong. There is still a chance that you may become a ninja. I won't expel you from the academy considering that the graduation exam is tomorrow. 
Whether or not you are capable of becoming a ninja is only possible once out of the academy. If you pass there will be more public service for you to do and I think I will deduct money from your pay earned on ninja missions until the Hokage monument has been repaired. Now if I am not mistaken you are supposed to be in class, so Aruka will escort you back and he has volunteered to oversee you clean up the damage you have done to the village. I understand Hokage, I will pass and become a ninja and will become the most powerful ninja this village has ever seen, believe it. Once Naruto leaves, Serutobi stands up to look out his window and watch the Anbu with Aruka leave the outer gates. Naruto's intelligence is quick, he knew exactly what to say to let me give him another chance to become a ninja. I hope this will turn out for the best, if not. Back at the academy Naruto stands in front of the class being lectured by Aruka. You're messing up again Naruto. You failed last year's graduation, the exit exam is days away and now you pull something like this on the village. Naruto's reaction to Aruka's words was to raise his eyebrow roll his eyes and snort looking out the window looking like he couldn't care less. The vein above Aruka's eyebrow twitches as the irritated frown on his face deepens. Fine, since you missed today's lesson everyone will practice the transformation jutsu. An immediate and uniform moan comes from nearly every student at having to do the same thing over again. With Aruka in the front of the class with his clipboard calling names each student waited in line for their turn. Next up, Sakura Haruno, the pink-haired girl walks up and forms the seal for the transformation jutsu and poofs into a perfect replica of Aruka. Transformed into me, good, looking down to make a mark on his clipboard Aruka misses Sakura's little jump of joy as her inner voice cheers on her success. Sasuke did you see that? Next up, Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke walks up to take his turn and quickly transforms into Aruka. A uh, good, Sasuke walks back to his place in line looking as indifferent as always to the cheers he gets from the girls. This is so lame, we always have to pay for your screw-ups Naruto. Ino Yamanaka's annoyed face looks at Naruto from around Choji. Yeah Naruto, it's always such a drag having to do all this extra work because of you. Shikamaru's annoyance was clear in his voice, but then again he always sounded annoyed. Next up, Naruto Uzumaki. Like I care what makes any of you happy, Naruto says as he walks up to take his turn. As Naruto passes a small dark-haired girl her eyes first turn fearful then soft as she quietly says, Naruto, good luck, do your best. Uruka's face set into a stern expression stares down the small blonde. Scratching his twitching ear Naruto looks up into Aruka's eyes and forms the sign for the transformation jutsu and smirks before he cries, transform. Smoke forms from under the soles of Naruto's feet and rushes up to cover his body just as the jutsu normally is performed. Aruka's eyes widen as he looks up at the thing that emerged from the smoke. It was big and black and looked like a fleshy head with feet, the top bends down to point at Aruka and two large glowing red eyes open. The center of the head cracks open and big large jaws gap wide with a roar, Aruka has enough time to take one startled step back as the creature lunges forward and clamps his jaws on Aruka. With another pop of smoke the illusion cancelled out and Aruka was on the ground with one hand on the ground and the other clutching the clipboard looking up at a laughing blonde. Gahahahaha how did you like that, that's my scary jutsu. In an instant Aruka was on his feet and without seeing any hand sign transformed his head five times its size much like Naruto had just done and yells, cut the stupid tricks, this is your last warning. Bending over to pick up another scorched black rock Naruto grunts as he lifts it off the ceiling of the building he was on. Tossing the stone onto the cart with all the other stones Naruto drags his feet back to the courtyard where most of the heavy stones fell from the monument. HH Meng and all these big stones and not one body. I wasn't going to intentionally kill someone but there should have been some collateral damage other than breaking a few bricks some roof tiles and windows. I'm tired of these pathetic attacks, I have only learned a little chakra control and paper bombs are the only things I can use my chakra effectively on. I need to learn more of these jutsu, if I fail this exam I won't learn anything new. You're not going home until you've cleaned all this up, Baruka was keeping a close watch on Naruto sitting on a roof. Whatever. It's not like I have anything or anyone to go to tonight or any night, so who cares? Turning his back on Aruka, Naruto goes back to work and doesn't see Aruka's saddened face at his words. Say Naruto, 
After you're done with all this how about I treat you to some ramen, the good stuff, huh so what do you say? Naruto stops still at hearing this and slowly turns his head to look at Aruka and ask, what's ramen? Ichiraku ramen shines like a beacon in the dark streets at night, the short flags blocking view of the dinners but just long enough to show empty seats to an interested passing customer. This night few sit enjoying a steaming bowl of ramen but the most noticeable are the green vested chunin sitting next to the tattered bastard. As they wait sitting in front of the glass counter separating the sitting area and the small kitchen Naruto's eyes are wide and nose flaring with the smell of the food as he watches Ayame and her father prepare the large double pork ramen bowls Aruka ordered. Turning to look at Naruto's curious face Aruka asks, Naruto, why would you do that to the Hokage faces, I mean you know who the Hokage are, right? Looking away from the ramen Naruto takes a moment to look Aruka in the eye, of course I know, everybody knows. Then why Naruto, why did you do it? The happy voice of Ayame interrupts with, two large miso pork ramen, thank you and enjoy, and places the steaming bowls down. Naruto's nose can be seen twitching as he takes in the new smell, this strange soup with white worm things in the middle has multiple strong smells working together. I smell, mmmmnnn bone marrow, yum, smells like pig flesh, some vegetables, and smells like some kind of bean mixed in. This is the first time human cooking has smelled so good. Turning his red eyes back to the chunin, people who are afraid to do the impossible will never accomplish anything great. I have done pranks in the past but my last big prank before graduating had to be my biggest one yet, and no one would ever think of attacking the most superfluous decoration of the village. By accomplishing greater feats than those around me I will gain power faster. I will be the most powerful force in this world, and all will show proper respect to me. And I will be able to burn this village and use this mortal world as my plaything. Uruka's slightly surprised face is stuck mid slurp with noodles sticking out of his mouth at this declaration. Naruto isn't usually this vocal about his goals and dreams, but why do I always feel like he's holding something back? Naruto lifts up the bowl in his hands and takes a tentative sip at the broth in the bowl. Then, as fast as any person has ever seen anyone eat before, Naruto's hand snaps out grabbing a pair of chopsticks and begins to devour the bowl of ramen. When finished Naruto slams the bowl back down on the table leans back and releases a deep guttural burp. Well Naruto, you may have the drive to become a ninja and to become strong, but tomorrow you're going to need real focus to pass the graduating exam and not some quick joke like that scary jutsu. And with that Aruka gets up and pays for the meal and begins to walk home. Hey. Wait a minute you deadbeat, get back here and buy me another bowl of this heaven broth. The apartment districts of Konoha are spread out inside the village and are commonly known by their locations and reputations. Places like the luxurious north side apartments near the Hyuga estates which usually are homes for the better off businessmen and dignitaries, or the southeast ninja belt filled with professional and primarily single ninja. But the only apartment district with a nickname was the northeast apartment block, the Boonies. Low-income apartments are important for any society, allowing a roof for all and a place for everyone. However, over the years the Northeast Block earned its nickname as less and less people began living and renting there and less and less money went into maintenance. The neglect left the buildings starting to look like they belonged in a ghost town giving the boonies a creepy reputation and keeping the streets empty at night. One three-story apartment with its peeling yellow paint and cracking plaster was avoided the most by all the locals. Its cracked windows would rarely light up at night in the one apartment in the whole building by its sole occupant. The first rays of sunlight peeking into Naruto's apartment windows begin to illuminate the dusty room. No furniture to speak of, no bed and no couch and not even a chair, all there are is pillows, pillows everywhere. Pillows of every shape and size piled on top each other spreading out covering the whole floor. As the sun hits a mound of pillows by the window they begin to stir slowly and soon a teenage human's back arches up as the heat stirs him awake. Pushing himself to his knees Naruto's bleary eyes slit open and turn to the window. No matter how many times I feel dawn wake me, this human form does not want to wake up, if I gave in and just close my eyes. No, wake your ass up you pitiful human form. Pushing up on his hands and feet Naruto bleary-eyed walks on all fours making his way to the bathroom climbing over pillows and passing the mound of used ramen cups in the corner by the door. Raising up to his legs Naruto walks into the bathroom to go do his business, 
he learned his lesson in the past about walking on all fours into the bathroom by hitting his head on the porcelain altar. After flushing the toilet and spraying himself with water for a couple of seconds in the shower he steps out of the bathroom and shakes the water from his skin much like any animal would to get the water out of their fur. As much as I hate these humans and their greedy natures, they do have the best idea so far for disposing of waste. It's so much better smelling than just picking a spot in your cave or burying it somewhere. Walking through the kitchen sniffing around until he finds a half-eaten instant ramen cup and downs it whole. Damn this instant ramen, it's nothing like that Ichiraku's place with real meat in the broth. I wonder if it's the human's taste buds that likes this so much or if I actually like this stuff. Then moving to the refrigerator he pulls the handle and looks inside. But nothing is better than the hunt, and the kill. To him, a demon reborn as a human, the contents of his refrigerator looked normal, but to any true human it would look like it belonged to some deranged serial killer. The inside walls were copper brown with dried blood. The racks were full of meat of various animals some still with skins and fur attached. The fox in him couldn't stand not hunting for his food at night, besides most of the supermarkets wouldn't even let him in the building to buy anything. The Hokage had to step in and make a store sell him groceries, as well as give him his monthly allowance of money. But the only remotely human food found in the fridge were the cartons of eggs and some gutted fish in brown paper from the market. Reaching for an egg he grabs the last of his breakfast and slams the fridge door shut begins to chomp and slurp the raw egg. Naruto continues to eat while staring out the window as the village begins to wake he thinks about the day to come. Damn ninjas, you would think they would be nocturnal as I naturally am, but no, they need to rise with the sun every day as if the sun grants them some kind of protection. Today was different than most though, lots of planning, practice, and patience had accumulated to today. Crimson eyes narrow at the thought of being free of the ninja academy, of becoming a genin ninja. When I am a genin I can read in the village archives, and with a jonin sensei I can learn new ways of harnessing this weak human chakra. So far the only thing I can handle is the slightly useless transformation jutsu that allows me to evade capture or literally scare the crap out of these fucking villagers. Today I will pass the graduation exam and take the next step to unlocking this confounded seal to my infinite power, and then freedom. With dark thoughts running through the transmuted demon's mind he finishes his morning routine getting dressed in the same tattered human clothing he's had for years now. The orange jumpsuit the Hokage had given him on his ninth birthday had served him well compared to the other clothing he had worn in years past. This particular jumpsuit according to the old cage had been left for him by his mother, Kashina, and it carried the symbols of his people long lost and forgotten. The suit's history did not concern him much but its durable material made of a canvas-like cloth with steel tri-weave fibers woven through and the ninja leathers did give him the protection his frail human form did not. Picking up and tying on the sash around his waist to hold the frayed ends of his jacket and shirt down then finding and strapping on his shoes the demon stands in front of the mirror on his wall and looks at what is reflected back. Looking into that mirror the usual thoughts and emotions shock through the small blonde's mind. The eyes are what he focuses on, black slits in crimson orbs are the only familiar sight in the reflection of what is supposed to be his face. Instead of red-orange fur there is pink skin, instead of a long snout and jaws there is a small nose and a mouth with slightly elongated canines. The more he stares into his eyes the angrier he gets, his face contorts slowly into a rage with teeth bare and a stare that could create the same effect as killing intent. And then it happens. For a flash it seems as though his reflection changes to his true form, the Ninetales demon fox with fur bristling as he shakes with rage. But like every other morning before he leaves the apartment he stares at his reflection as the human face is all that looks back. No. It's time to focus, breathing out and calming his features to look emotionally neutral, which with years of scowling and giving the death stare to thousands has left the blonde's face into a stern expression. What is your name, what are you? He whispers to the human face in the mirror. Pulling his teeth into a pained smile he answers back, my name is Kura. Growling out in frustration at the slip up he clenches his fist, I will not speak my true name in this form if I can help it, now again. What is your name? Standing straight with his left hand in a fist on his waist and the other hand in a thumbs up as his eyes almost squeeze shut from the toothy smile stretched across his face. Your name is Uzumaki Naruto and I am the best ninja ever, Dadbeo. You fail, 
The huge hinge of Aruka's head yells from behind his desk at the now smoky room from the failed attempt of Naruto's clone jutsu. Aruka's mind races as he watches Naruto's shocked expression, he couldn't make one solid clone, it looked like it was made of smoke and was standing in front of a powerful fan, he looks down and picks up the fail stamp to mark the young ninja hopeful's file. Hold on there Aruka, Mizuki puts his hand on top of Aruka stopping him from using the stamp. Mizuki sensei, I cannot pass him since he wasn't able to make a clone for more than a second before it failed. Naruto's eyes dart back and forth between Aruka and Mizuki, the slightest bit of hope in his eye that for some reason Mizuki would stick up for him. Mizuki takes the stamp out of Aruka's hand and slides Naruto's file over to him, oh no, don't misunderstand me Aruka sensei, he slams the stamp in the appropriate box and lifts to reveal the big red fail now on the paper. I just wanted to have the chance to fail him myself. Outside the academy a large group of brand new genin were showing off their headbands to their parents. Some adults in plain clothes and some older ninja can be seen congratulating their next generation as a fellow leaf ninja, but two in kimonos looked over at the blonde leaning against the tree next to the swing across the yard. Look he's the only one who failed, the older woman sneered lifting her nose as she stared over her shoulder. Just imagine what a dangerous thing like him could be if he became a ninja, he would be oh, the women had just noticed that Naruto was looking right at them and was raking his claws into the tree. Both turned quickly and rejoined their families leaving the blonde to stand with his hands in his pockets looking deep in thought. While the crowd continues with their happy chatter two sets of eyes belonging to the Hokage and Aruka keep watch over Naruto from among the crowd. Aruka, we need to talk. Naruto pushes off of the tree and starts walking away when he sees another figure leaning against the tree by the exit. As the orange-clad boy walked up to pass Mizuki, Naruto never took his eye off his prissy teacher, Mizuki had a strange look in his eyes. Say Naruto, we need to talk. The Hokage and Aruka were sitting where the aging leader liked to take tea, on an open ledge on the side of the Hokage's office overlooking a corner park with trees and a small lake by the old Uchiha district. Aruka I have long overlooked Naruto's antics due to the belief that he has been acting out in the desperate need for attention. He knows the pain of not having the love of a mother and father, just as I have told you before he became a student of yours. Sipping at his tea Sarutobi looks out at the view, but I have to ask since his behavior has been so dark, what do you think Aruka? The scarred Chunin eyebrows furrow as he listens intently to his leader, do you think Naruto has succumbed to the influences of the fox? Do you think he is a danger to the village? Aside from me, you are the only other person who has spent any amount of time with him, you and the Anbu. Eyes looking down at his own untouched tea and recalling all the times through the years Naruto had been in trouble. Taijutsu classes where Naruto had to be reminded over and over again not to bite or use those thick and sharp claws of his. He learned early that Naruto could adhere to walls and trees with those claws, or make some deep gouges in people's skin. The students scared faces as he came into the classroom over the years, or the fights he would be in the middle of with whichever student looked at him wrong, the children always seemed to avoid Naruto even when he was calm and not causing chaos. He was showing promise in Taijutsu and was second only to Sasuke Uchiha, but had little to no patience for his history lessons and was even worse at molding his chakra. And there was all his mean pranks and sinister attitude. Lord Hokage, I do believe that Naruto's behavior has been influenced. The cage's eyes narrow at this information, no one likes him, the students have always been afraid of him. The few times I've been with him to enforce his public service I have seen the treatment he receives by the other villagers, even hearing whispered words of, demon, as we pass by. I too think that he is so negative because of the environment he is in which is clearly hostile. Standing and walking to the railing Sarutobi ponders on the information he's just heard thinking to himself on Naruto's future. And thinking on the immediate future he reminds himself to increase the patrols in case Naruto plans on taking his frustrations out on failing the test with another dangerous prank. A balcony with a open grate on the fifth floor of a building missing a whole guard rail would be a strange sight almost anywhere, but in ninja villages these balconies were some people's front doors. Naruto sits there with his legs hanging over the edge, staring out at the surrounding buildings. Mizuki was leaning against the wall staring at the back of the blonde's head. You know Aruka is a tough sensei but he has nothing against you, unlike me with our, history. He pushes off the wall and with slow methodical steps moves behind Naruto. 
You fight well. You can run as fast as most chunin, even up walls without chakra, but that's been your problem all along, your chakra control you little monster. Naruto turns putting his left hand down to glare back at Mizuki in his way that made his naturally dark lines around his eyes seem to darken. But, even I have a heart Naruto, so I am going to let you in on a little secret. Fast tapping sounds that can be heard across rooftops made by the specialized ninja's sandal make little to no noise, a good ninja will make no noise that anyone can hear except for the ninja themselves. Most don't know the freedom of running as a ninja. The sound of the fast tapping of a ninja's feet, the feel and sound of air rushing across the skin and through your hair, the thrill of using one's momentum to leap and soar between buildings like you were flying. Naruto is running like this tonight across roof tiles and telephone poles propelling himself to the Hokage Tower. He has a mission, and his mind is focused with a predatory ferocity. Leaping off the last house he keeps his body straight until he zooms in on the top roof tiles of the outer wall and he uses his arms to springboard off continuing his motion into a series of flips to slam his claws into the wall of the Hokage Tower. He stays there with his claws embedded in the wall with small cracks around the holes he's made with his fingers, his head pivots to see if he was spotted. His eyesight is amazing at night, since his eyes see not only visible light, but infrared light too. The area was clear so he peels one hand out of the wall and proceeds to climb up and make his way to the open square in the wall reserved for the Anbu leading into the tower. Running through into the inner halls he runs to the Hokage's personal study, and then into the vault behind the left scroll on the back wall, the largest scroll with the red wood center, grab it and escape, piece of C-A-A-A-A-A. Sniffing at what he just smelled and recognizing not only that it was the Hokage's scent of tobacco and stress but that he was close enough that he was three seconds away from running into the old cage. Serutobi was in his office at the time dealing with his usual mounds of paperwork when he heard the sound of someone hitting the outer wall. When he decided to check on it he knew he was right in heading down the hall when he heard the footsteps were heading his way rapidly. When the footsteps were just about to turn the corner he set his feet preparing to face the intruder he was then taken for the first time in a long time completely by surprise. The sudden puff of smoke of a henge are the first he can see, but what slides out is a beautiful naked woman with thin wisps of smoke obscuring strategic body parts. Serutobi can't help but take in the view of the woman starting at her ankles and worked his eyes up feeling the blood rushing to his head as her ample breasts come into view. And finally after a longer millisecond pause on her chest his eyes go up to where her face should be. But instead of a normal human face there was a strange slimy looking black muzzle that opened into a screeching roar and dripping teeth. Serutobi promptly falls on his butt, eyes white with shock barely register the retreating dirty orange boy running into his study. I really should send out word to the Anbu to secure the area so he can't escape, but I don't want anyone seeing my front covered in red and my back stained in brown. I'm going to change first. Running out with the scroll strapped to his back and making his way to the forest was actually easy. Once Naruto was in the trees he was really fast, bounding from branch to branch he soon descends into a clearing with a small forest ninja hut. Sitting down and unfolding the large scroll Naruto reads the title, Kanahagakur Grand Scroll of Sealing. Naruto's eyes stretch wide with surprise, this is it, this is what I need to get free. His eyes dart back and forth wide as he takes in the information on the scroll. First as shadow clone jutsu, creating perfect copies of myself in any number depending on how much chakra is applied. Concentrating chakra into the navel in a spiral while thinking of your chakra-like small bubbles when blown out from your body expand into perfect copies of yourself. Yes, I think this will be a handy weapon, HMMMNN what's next? Rolling the massive scroll more open to reveal more jutsu spread across the paper, some in neat calligraphy and even a few small jutsu in between others like quickly added notes. So this is a scroll written by Hashirama and his kin, there are a lot of forbidden jutsu here, what's this one, Shunshin no jutsu, and this little scribble says, transparency jutsu, that, actually sounds useful. Or this one, Keke Genki Kaido. His red eyes read and reread the applications of this jutsu not quite believing what he was reading. Committing this jutsu to memory he then moves on to the next rolling the scroll open more, but a small sound reaches his pointy ears. The sound of a ninja running through the trees heading his way. Even from afar Naruto's demon enhanced hearing could pick up many sounds around him, 
and all the years of running from ninjas in this little body has given him an almost sixth sense where he could almost see the ninja. As Naruto stands while rolling the scroll up he stretches his muscles. Moving around to spread blood through the muscles was a trick he learned in the academy and he wanted to be ready to face his enemy. As the sounds of the approaching ninja get closer Naruto sniffs the air, he recognizes the scent, Mizuki. There is no way that this scroll is a test for passing the academy, there's too many forbidden jutsu in this scroll to let it be stolen. Mizuki, you want this scroll for yourself. Maybe to sell it, or if you're actually trying to become a non-lame-ass ninja by learning some powerful techniques, but either way you have used me tonight. Slipping a kanai into his palm he hides it along his forearm, for trying to make me your tool Mizuki you die tonight, besides you're more than likely planning on killing me. I won't be killed by a fool like you, I have a destiny to fulfill. Mizuki lands on the last branch before the clearing and stands tall angling just right to show the points on his oversized shuriken strapped to his back. Looking down Mizuki sees his prey standing there in the clearing with the scroll strapped to his back. Naruto, excellent job stealing the scroll I can now tell you congratulations, you graduate, plastering on his best smile and squint eyes he laughs while reaching behind his head to scratch his neck and move to unclasp the first shuriken. But instead, Mizuki's eyes snap open at the sound of a kunai slicing through air to see the knife moving fast towards his face. Sidestepping out of the weapon's path the knife sails past just cutting a strand or two of his white hair. Naruto, what do you think you're doing? Putting his hands behind his head Naruto glares back at Mizuki, what I am doing is pretty obvious to anyone with a brain, me throwing a kunai at you is just my way of saying, I know what you're doing here. The vein throbbing on his forehead seems to get bigger as Mizuki's anger rises, well well, the village demon brat figured out my little ruse. Say Naruto, do you know why everyone in the village calls you demon, it's because it's true, you are a demon you are the nine-tailed fox. Didn't you think it was strange, the way the villagers treated you, like you're a dirty mangy animal, and it is why this village will never accept you. Staring down at the blonde to see what his words were doing to the small boy, he watches as the 12-year-old lifts his head to lock eyes with Mizuki. Tell me something I don't know, am I Zuki? The aforementioned ninja's eyes widen in shock as this was not a expected revelation. I hate you humans so much, but not as much as I hate you, tiger bitch. Memory flashes back through Mizuki's mind and fills with rage re-experiencing the ordeal the small demon had put him through, and in a flash ripped off the huge shuriken off his back. Die demon. Spinning the shuriken in his hand Mizuki hurls the weapon at Naruto who in the few milliseconds shifts to dodge, but slips his foot on the loose sand. Eyes wide in fear he looses his balance and the spinning death missile twists vertically in the last few feet to slam into his stomach. The speed and strength behind the shuriken lifted the small blonde off his feet and pinning him to the outside wall of the hut. Yes, I've killed the demon, now I take the scroll and escape this village, bending his knees to jump to his kill he stops as Naruto's body pops into a cloud of smoke leaving the shuriken embedded in wall. W what? Was that a shadow clone? How did he do it? I thought he couldn't make clone UUGHH. Mizuki was too shocked by the shadow clone to have noticed another Naruto jumping from around the tree to slam a knee into the side of Mizuki's head sending him falling 30 feet to the ground. Recovering before he slammed head first, Mizuki lands on his feet sliding backwards to a stop. Looking up at the Naruto still in the trees his eyes dart left and right when nine other Narutos walk out from around the trees. You took me by surprise, that's all. To think that a demon like you could learn a jutsu from the great scroll is surprising, but I could annihilate you with one move you little brat. Mizuki ripped the last shuriken off his back when he said his last word. Bring it on bitch, all nine bring their hands together to form the cross hand sign, shadow clone jutsu. The whole area explodes with smoke surrounding Mizuki, and his eyes widen as sweat pours down his face as he takes in the sight of hundreds, no, thousands of Naruto's glare crimson eyes at him. As you can see I will bring it a thousandfold right back to you. In a rush the clones speed towards Mizuki as he in a panic looks back and forth not knowing what to do about the horde coming for his blood. The first of the clones surrounding the doomed Chunin were running their claws through the dirt then swiped up to rip into Mizuki's body. The sharp claws sprayed blood and the force of their strikes lifted Mizuki into the air where other clones would zoom past him punching him this way and that way. 
The effect made Mizuki into a human pinball as every clone took the opportunity to kick him back into the air or send him flying into another wave of clones. Pain fills Mizuki's mind as each strike fractures another bone or claw tears into his skin and as one last kick to his solar plexus sends him higher than before, his one still open eye can barely see the orange blur flying to him spin mid-air to rocket a spinning back kick to his cheek. The kick sent him flying into the nearest tree and with a sickening sound made contact head first breaking his neck. Mizuki's fall back to earth was missed as the area once again filled with smoke as each clone popped out of existence. But, when the smoke cleared the bloodied Chunin was sprawled on the ground with the trunk of the tree propping him up. Naruto walks the last few feet to stand in front of the broken man, this is what you get for tricking me Mizuki, you knew that graduating out of the academy was what I wanted more than anything else, and after reading the scroll I knew that you were going to steal it and escape the village. Mizuki's swollen eyes blearily train on the shadowed blonde, obviously he is close to unconsciousness but weakly tries to speak, damn you demon, I'll kill you. Naruto puts his hands on his hips and smirks, I don't think you're going to be killing anyone, not ever again and definitely not me. I could be kind and just put you out of your misery, but I think I'll let Uruka take you in instead. Turning sideways and looking high up into the trees at the other Chunin standing there panting with a shocked look on his face. And Naruto, this is, I can't believe what has happened, jumping down to stand next to Naruto Uruka looks at the now unconscious Mizuki, I can't believe what has happened tonight. Dozens of ninja were commanded to bring you to the Hokage for stealing the scroll of sealing, and to think even I believed you were guilty, but it was Mizuki who had caused all this. Naruto, I am sore. Naruto walks away towards Mizuki before Uruka can finish his sentence, it's pointless apologizing for the actions of one man, he has hated me for years and I found any and all chances to get back at him. It's pretty clear now that he would have tried to use me and betray me, reaching down Naruto pulls the now blood red head band off Mizuki's head, he used the leaf, as he used me, a demon. Uruka's worried expression deepens as his fears are confirmed after watching Naruto's clone attacks and hearing Mizuki call him a demon, Naruto, Mizuki told you the truth. Yes, he told me that there is a demon inside me, and I've known for years, squeezing his hand around the metal headband he looks down at the dirt, I've heard the people over the years call me demon, I've felt the hatred of an entire village, even those who are supposed to help me have done their best to hurt me. Walking six steps away and looking up at the trees he continues with Aruka's wide eyes trained on the young blonde. And all I've wanted now for years is to become a ninja of the leaf, to be accepted by the village at last, to not feel hatred towards me for what I have become and help me achieve my greatest potential. Not only as the greatest ninja that ever lived, but as a human being, and no matter how long it takes or what I have to endure, I will be a ninja someday. Uruka completely taken in by the sincerity in Naruto's voice stares at the whirlpool symbol on Naruto's back thinking on the future for the young boy. Without a chance to let him grow and show his potential he may regress and become the demon the village believes him to be. But as a ninja of the leaf, he can strive each day to prove himself to all those around him. Closing the distance between them Uruka places a hand on his shoulder and turns the boy around to take the bloody head band out of his hands. Naruto, close your eyes, I have something I want to give you. Doing as he was told with a confused look on his face he squeezes his eyes shut and waits patiently as he feels the older mons hands on his head and hears the sound of cloth rubbing together. Okay, open your eyes. Crimson eyes blink open in the slowly in the dim light of the slow dawn creeping on the duo. The blonde's eyebrows arch up and feel the new addition to his wardrobe around his forehead. Congratulations, you graduate. Eyes wide in shock, did that bullshit speech really work? Naruto's hand reaches up to the bloodied headband now tied to his head and runs his hand over the etched seal of the leaf symbol. Realization and joy now spreads across the now young ninja's head at the knowledge of his accomplishment and he jumps pumping his fist into the air and yells load enough for the whole forest to hear. Ya ata. The midday sun is shining down on the rooftop of the Hokage Tower lighting up the photo set with the newly fixed Hokage faces in the background. Many newly graduated ninja had made their way through getting photos taken for their personal files. But the last appointment of the day was giving the photographer a hard time. Listen kid, do you really want me to take your photo like that? The grey-haired man in glasses stares at Naruto with an annoyed expression. Of course I do. Why else would I be sitting here like this, 
so come on and take the picture already. Okay, the photographer puts his head under the cloth and holds the flash, say cheese. Flash. With the Hokage monument in the background stood Naruto Nine Tails Uzumaki with his hand in a fist and the other stretched out towards the camera showing his claws. His orange jumpsuit is open showing the mesh ninja shirt he's wearing, his jacket is sleeveless with what looks like old blood staining the jagged edges of the torn sleeves making it look like a flames. On his normally bare arms are two heavily scarred leather forearm guards held on with belts. Around his waist is a red sash and an orange and red half cape. The whole piece of cloth was tattered orange with red flames at the bottom. And glaring at the camera was Naruto's ragged yellow hair reminiscent of the fourth mountain sculpture behind his head but with red eyes blazing. The lower part of his face starting from the bridge of his nose down below his jaw is covered with a mask. It looks like a broken in half Anbu mask but had been whittled down probably with a kunai to have a nasty smile full of sharp teeth reminiscent of a fox. Altogether in the photo Naruto looked like a menacing figure standing there with the still bloody headband tied tightly around his head. And the disappointed look of the Hokage's face takes in the photo of Naruto in his hand and then he looks up at the smug face of the blonde sitting in the chair. It took me a while to get all the pieces together, it was a good day at the dumpster behind the ninja shop, I found these arm guards and the cloth matched the clothes I wear now, and there were a bunch of broken stuff where I found the mask and it took me a couple hours to cut the teeth just right. Take it again, what, no way in hell. The stare down commences as they glare daggers at each other. Naruto jumps to his feet and yells, transform, the smoke appears and disappears in an instant to reveal the same giant jaw dark monster that scared the Hokage that one night. Hum, nice try Naruto, but you're not distracting me with that again, now take the picture again, this can't even identify you. So next time no masks as they are reserved for the Anbu only. The cage leans forward folding his hands in front of his face as Naruto poofs back into normal, but a sudden sound comes to his ears. The sound is the fast tapping of ninja sandals running towards him, and from the sound of the feet with how quickly the steps are between each other he could tell they were small feet. And before he turns his head to see he knows it's his small grandson taking advantage of his attention on Naruto to try and surprise attack him. Konohamuru runs with one hand bent at the elbow in front of his collarbone holding a shuriken, old man, now's the time I defeat you and become the fifth Hokage. The boy throws the shuriken at the aging cage and all Serutobi does to dodge is lean his head to the left letting the spinning razor spin past him to embed itself into the ceiling. As Konohamuru continues to run he reaches into his pocket for another shuriken and jumps into the air pulling out the weapon to throw again only to be struck in the face by the fast spinning back fist belonging to Naruto. The hit slams into the boy's face and for that first millisecond he feels his cheek pushed farther than it has ever gone before pressing into the bone, and then as the next millisecond begins Konohamuru feels the hardest hit of his life make impact with his skull. Time speeds back to normal as the hit sends the boy spinning in the air to impact hard on the floor and roll twice before stopping. Naruto the Hokage slams his hands on the table and Naruto snaps his head back at the cage. What do you think you are doing to my grandson? Naruto stands straight and puts his hands on his hips and snorts, whatever, I was doing what any loyal ninja is supposed to do and protect the cage. Serutobi's eyes flick over to his grandson who had now lifted to his knees to hold his face and silently sob. That would be true if he was an actual threat to me but I can't remember the last time I was seriously in danger from an eight-year-old boy. At this point, a tall man wearing the navy blue uniform of most Chunin and Jonin minus the vest skids to a halt at the door. Ebisu's shocked face takes in the scene of the Hokage with his scolding face on, Konohamuru slowly standing up holding his cheek, and a ragged red and orange kid with yellow hair. Of course, the nine-tailed fox, he's the cause of all this. Konohamuru after shaking away the last of the stars in his eyes and runs to Naruto's side and kicks him in the leg. Hey you, what's your name, I could have you punished for hitting the grandson of the Hokage. Naruto's furious eyes glint dangerously and he grabs the boy's scarf around his neck and lifts him on his toes to yell in his face, you're the one who should be punished for interrupting my appointment and attacking the old man, he lifts his other hand and flexes his fingers showing his claws menacingly. Hey. Stop that right now, have you been paying attention? That is the grandson of the third Hokage, and you dare raise a hand to him. Ebisu takes a few steps forward clenching his hands to fists. 
Looking over his shoulder to listen to Ebisu speak, Naruto now slowly relaxes his hand into a light fist. Ha! Huh, that stopped him, just like all the others, he's not gonna touch me again. Putting on his smug grin when Naruto looks Konohamuru in the eyes he says, what's the matter tough guy the first thought you were gonna hit me again. You scared that the Hokage is my grandfather. Rage flashes in Naruto's eyes making them look they glowed red as his teeth bare, I don't care if he's your mother and wiped your ass this morning, so believe it. Naruto's fist connects with Konohamuru's head with a downward hook sending the boy's head towards the floor. In the last few moments before his head makes contact with the floor Konohamuru thinks, this, guys, different, dangerous, dot indifferent. Slam. Ebisu, quite beside himself shakes with disbelief and concern over the pummeling of his prized student. Naruto, you're really not helping here, why don't you go and take that picture again before the photographer leaves? Naruto completely satisfied with the events that took place walks out the door as Ebisu flusters, oh no, are you alright honorable grandson? Pulling the tip of his hat down slightly the Hokage frowns in frustration at the antics which were one of the main causes of his headaches. I might have been more upset at all this, but Konohamuru has been a brat these last couple of weeks, so he needs to learn that not everyone will put up with his antics. Walking down the street, Going nowhere in particular Naruto trudges along thinking on the small loss of not being allowed to keep his mask. Damn wrinkled old cage, I swear he comes up with fake rules and laws to piss me off, and speaking of pissing me off. He had noticed a while ago that he had picked up a tail since the Hokage Tower, and he wasn't any good at hiding or pursuing at all. There were the fast little taps of his little ninja sandals he had heard back in the office. The sound of fabric dragging in the sand as he crept along the sides of buildings, and the worst yet was when he turned around when heard the small pursuer walk right behind him. Naruto's quick eyes were able to take in the full image of the little grandson of the Hokage before the boy notices and ducks pulling a cloth over his head acting like he was suddenly invisible. Naruto's eye twitches as he sweat drops at the pitiful sight of the kid's attempt at becoming a stone, stones don't have feet you moron. The red and orange ninja continues on walking and his pursuer jumps back up and continues to follow, poorly. Down the street among some other villagers Naruto pauses and leans forward to adjust his right sandal, pushing back on the tip of the sandal by tapping them in the sand he continues walking on. Konohamuru jumps from around the barrel he was spying around and runs after his prey, speeding past a villager he steps right on the spot where Naruto had stopped, and a small pop explodes under his sandal. With a startled cry Konohamuru's foot slips and sends his butt to the hard earth. By now the villagers had noticed the little boy's fall and more noticed once they heard the boy's loud whimpering. Getting up and rubbing his behind he slowly starts his chase again and picks up speed when he hears the laughter of the people watching him try to run away while holding his butt. A little bit up the street, past a couple sets of stairs Naruto has stopped again. He is good. I only saw him tighten his sandal and he set a trap for me in that moment, I have to be more careful. Naruto is staring at a sign, face gazing with consideration over going into the local baths while reading the large blue welcome sign which read, Baths, Men Only. The dirty orange teen starts walking up to the entrance and goes inside, not wanting to lose his target Konohamuru rushes after him up to the building. Looking up at the sign for the baths he starts thinking of stealing some towels to use as a disguise as he runs into the entrance. What Konohamuru didn't notice was three important things. One was the poof of smoke that escaped out of the open space in the wall just below the roof, two was that as the boy walked up to the doorway he didn't see Naruto step around the corner across the street. And third, the sign above the bathhouse suddenly has a poof of smoke appear and disappear in two moments. Unfortunately for Konohamuru he wasn't now outside to read the sign which properly read as, Baths, Women Only. Naruto's smile widens as he hears the sounds of screams erupt from the public women's bath, and what sounds like the whipping of wet cotton snapping out in between the screams. Waiting with anticipation Naruto leans against the adjacent wall and watches the wide-eyed panicked kid run out of the baths. And to much disappointment, was relatively unharmed except for a few red marks here or there. HMMGRRFF, annoyance pulls on the yellow-haired teen's face as he walks away from the scene. That happened to me and I ended up with a shuriken embedded in my ass from that damn purple-haired pineapple-headed woman with the nice rack. 
Konohamuru lifts his head and takes a deep breath and sees his target walking up the street, and gritting his teeth he bolts straight at the blonde's back leaving behind the stealth he thought he had. Running past the annoyed blonde and sliding in the sand to a halt in front of Naruto, Konohamuru strikes a stance and points his finger at his target. All right tough guy, you're pretty good to notice me tailing you and set me up like that, so I have picked my eternal rival well then, ha ha ha. He finishes his laughing taking his hand and rubbing his nose with a wide smile on he face, only to look up and lose the smile when he saw Naruto's angry expression. There's a harsh glare to his eyes making his dark lashes tighten and make the lines around his eyes seem solid black. The muscles in Naruto's face that tighten around his eyes and nose adding to the fierce look, and his mouth was just barely spread open to reveal his sharp teeth exposed. This was known to those who have had close encounters or spent one-on-one -on -one time with Naruto as his, I am pissed at you, face. Flexing his fingers, which always show of his claws well enough to cause fear, he walks up to Konohamuru and stops just out of the little boy's arm reach, but not too far for his. With what sounds like a growl in his voice Naruto harshly responds to Konohamuru's declaration. You. Daughter calling me, your eternal rival, so does this mean you want to fight? Naruto's hand moves in a blur and snatches up Konohamuru by the scarf around his neck just as he had back in front of the Hokage. No nno no, it means that I want to learn from you boss, Konohamuru's plea seems genuine through his fearful expression. Even he had heard the rumors about the dirty blonde boy Naruto, all villagers would tell him to stay far away from him. Holding Konohamuru up on his tiptoes Naruto raised an eyebrow in disbelief, you're kidding right, do you even know who I am, wait, I don't care. Listen to me as hard as you fucking can, do not follow me or else I will find new ways to mess you up. If you come to challenge me to a fight then I will do a lot worse than this. Grabbing Konohamuru by the hair he lifts the kid in the air then pulls him into ram his knee into the boy's solar plexus, the rush of the air wheezes out of him in a loud whoosh. Naruto drops the kid on the ground and turns to walk away in his sulky back arched way with his arms forward. W cough wa cough cough wait, Konohamuru struggles between coughs and gasps for air to speak as he takes two shaky steps at Naruto. Naruto's right eye narrows over his shoulder at the shaky need wannabe ninja, I said, buzz off. Leaning forward Naruto's leg bends at the knee up to his chest then swiftly extends a straight back kick into the stomach of Konohamuru. The small wannabe ninja is flying through the air like a rocket, arms and legs flailing behind him as he hurls past villagers to slam across the street into the open dumpster. When his body falls into the bin the top slams shut. Naruto smiling to himself turns back around and continues walking down the street, if the kid comes back after that one then he's a crazy little human, and he's the cage's grandson so I don't think I can get away with killing him, maybe not even scarring. But whatever. I've got more important things to do, like get ready and practice my new jutsus. And I get a Jonin sensei, but I share with two other ninjas, I'll have to show the Jonin that I am better than them. I'll have to gather intel and find their weaknesses if I am going to get more training time with the Jonin. More jutsu means more power, and more power will help awaken my endless power. Starting to run, Naruto jumps to the nearby roof ledge and runs across the sides of the buildings heading towards the training fields. And back in the distance he hears someone scream, Honorable Grandson. Naruto had spent the next two days training, so this morning unlike most he slept in past sunrise. But, as soon he was up he changed and ate quickly, because today was the day of the team appointments at the academy. Naruto closes his front door and sprints to the third floor ledge and leaps from building to building heading for the academy. As he's flying from the rooftops he looks down at the villagers, once in a while they will look up and see him running like this. But ever since he started wearing the orange and red flamed half cloak around his waist he noticed people watching him even more. Like now there were a couple of people in the alleyway looking up pointing at him and whispering to each other. With his good hearing he can make out, what's that demon wearing? How dare he, Dotin, he looks just like. Focusing back on the rooftops his run continues, I love the looks the people give me now, I remember the fourth Hokage riding on top his summon, his white cloak with red flames flapping in the wind. Closing in on the academy Naruto takes one last leap that sends him flying with his arms back and knees bent letting his new half cloak flap in the wind before he lands in a crouch in the back training field. 
My appearance has always disturbed these pathetic humans, but I noticed that they started looking at me differently after the Hokage tried to make me get a haircut. I only let the man cut the back of my head before I slashed at him for cutting my ear. It was two weeks of people staring until I understood. One drunk ninja saw me wandering the streets at night and in his stupor called me the fourth. Looking up at the Hokage monument as he had that night long ago, he can see the same hairstyle on the fourth's head. Standing and walking towards the back entrance he walks taller than he usually does and almost struts to the building looking like a small dirty orange fourth Hokage. And now, with the body of the son of the fourth I will change their vision of hope to despair, and with that last thought Naruto slides the door open and makes his way through the hallways to the classroom with all the noise. Pausing at the classroom door for just a second to listen to the amount of noise from people talking and moving around, sounds like the room is almost full, oh the surprise on their faces when they see me should be interesting. Standing in the dead center of the door he reaches up with his right hand and slides the door open so fast it slams into the wall with a loud smack. And I was right, look at their faces. In that one moment when the door slammed open the whole classroom of leaf-head banded children's attention turned to see Naruto in his whole new garb standing in the doorway. The blonde could just barely feel the change in air pressure at the almost silent nearly unanimous gasp. Some stared in disbelief, one even had her mouth open and most others looked like they were trying understand something difficult but scared at the same time. Some of the more brave ones narrowed their eyes at Naruto, like the ones he was locked with right now. Sasuke Uchiha, still not afraid to look me in the eye. Let's test his nerve. Naruto ignores the whispers of, I thought he didn't graduate, and, I heard from my father the other day that they almost killed him last week, but Naruto can't help but smirk at the gossip about him. He silently walks across the room to climb the steps to take the seat next to Sasuke putting his feet up on the desk and arms behind his back he sits there frowning and looking indifferent. After a couple of minutes go by and more people fill the room a pair of footsteps come from behind and pause by his side, Naruto, what are you doing here, this is for graduates only. Looking up at Shikamaru's frowning face he also notices with a quick flick of his eyes a couple others listening for the answer to the question. What are you blind and stupid, you see the headband I'm wearing don't you, so I guess that means I graduated. Shikamaru grunts as he walks away and says, what a drag, under his breath and before he was too far away to hear Naruto says, dumbass, as he always does to Shikamaru's retreating form. And now, the sudden entrance of two Kunichi by the back door catches his attention. Looking back he can see, Nozi, and, Pinky, fighting over who was first getting in the door. Just as the thought was crossing his mind that they were being stupid and Naruto starts to turn away, his gaze makes contact with someone who was looking at him. But when his eyes go to flick back to the pale eyes looking at him she had noticed him notice her and was now looking very nervously at her desk. Putting his hands behind his head again and leaning back into his seat he closes his eyes and tries to block out the noise with his own thoughts. How long till this is over, I can never stand the smell of these people stewing together in this box of a room. I can smell them now, most of them smell of dirt, some excrement under a shoe, nervous sweat, potato chips, and sniff hum lilacs and what else is it sniff lavender it's that girl that quiet one who was looking at me earlier she smells sniff very calming dot in sniff what sniff sniff now he can smell a bunch of scents mixed together and close sweat mixed with pheromones and anger nervousness a little fear and lots of perfume Opening his eyes and turning his attention back to the outside world he notices that the smell was a group of bickering girls standing in the stairs right next to him. They were throwing back and forth at each other, back off pig, I'm the one sitting next to Sasuke, and, no way I was here first, or, Sasuke doesn't want to sit next to you. But now, Naruto had had enough of them. Shut the hell up, he thunders at the group of pre-teens. All of them stop talking at the same time and it seems for the first time they notice that Naruto was sitting next to Sasuke the whole time. Some are backing away in fear and others have nervous faces as they contemplate the chances of sitting next to their crush but having to deal with Naruto too. You have no right to be yelling at us like that Naruto, Sasuke doesn't want to sit next to you he wants me to sit next to him. The, nosy, blonde one is usually the only one brave enough to say something. Yeah that's right, 
Someone as awesome like Sasuke wants one of his friends to sit next to him, so get out of the way. At this Naruto jumps up to his feet in a crouch on his seat he puts on his, I'm pissed at you face, and watches as they all cringe in fright. As they stare in fear saying nothing in their collective shock Naruto with a growl jumps and spins back through the air to land on all fours on the desk in front of Sasuke to glare nose to nose into his dark eyes. Screaming at Naruto's actions the girls go into a panic, Naruto get away from Sasuke, what do you think you're doing, and, stop blaring at Sasuke. Looking back at their squawking for a second he growls one more time and looks back to stare intently into black orbs. What is so special about you, you Kai Ha? You don't even have a Sharingan. Sasuke's eyes were chilly before, but now they blazed like they were going to ignite a fire jutsu. The whole classroom watches each of them not move an inch as their stare down continues, and from the look of it the whole classroom thought they were moments from having an ugly fight. Hey what's going on? The kid in the row in front of Naruto turns fast and without looking bumps into the crouched orange boy on the desk behind him. And in the next few moments the whole room felt time slow down. When Naruto is bumped it pushes his balance forward, and the surprise of being bumped hits his mind in the first millisecond. In the next millisecond he sees Sasuke's face quickly approaching his, and by the third millisecond realized as everyone else who was watching had that the closeness and position of their heads would press their faces into a human kiss. And in the fourth millisecond when both Naruto and Sasuke as well as all the fangirls realization of what is to come in the next moment brings the same surprised scared expression to all their faces. And as time seems to speed back up to normal, as it does always right before a big accident, Sasuke's face seems to rush the last few quarter inches of space between them. And then, smack. And as time speeds back up for the rest of the class they see Naruto's face heading on a collision course with Sasuke's, but in the last few moments of slow motion they see Naruto's head lift back as if trying to lean away from contact. And then Naruto's head slams back forward driving the steel leaf headband into Sasuke's nose causing the telltale sound of breaking bone. Sasuke takes the hit smacking his head on the desk behind him and falling over to his side dazed. Naruto jump flips again landing on the desk of the kid who bumped him, and punches him right the skull, watch your step klutz. He then walks across the desk and jumps off on to the stairs and moves through the remaining fangirls who weren't fussing over there, precious Sasuke, to take a seat in the only empty row in the middle of the class. By now Sasuke had gotten his wits back and was holding his nose when he said, Naruto. But before he can say anything else, Uruka chose this time to enter the classroom. Good morning students, oh well I guess after today I can't say that to you anymore. Since today you all start the path of being genin and will be joining your predetermined squads. After putting down his envelope holding the team positions on his desk he takes a second to see the still tense looks of the some standing students. Well come on now, let's see some organization, everyone take a seat so I can tell you which teams you're on. Uruka watches the mad dash of students taking the last of the seats, haha, just like the first day of school, they're all so nervous and excited at the same time, and they look, a little afraid. Hum, I wonder if Naruto did something again. After the rush to find seats, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke all ended up in the same aisle. Naruto, sitting there like he was bored, Sakura, staring with a smile at Sasuke, and Sasuke, pushing his nose until he feels a pop glares past Sakura at the oblivious Naruto. As Aruka starts listing off the names excited chatter is whispered through the room Naruto thinks on the who his, teammates, were going to be. I don't really care who's on my team, but now I'm going to have to get some intel on them, I don't really know anything about any of them. After scanning the room looking at everyone his attention stops on, Pinky, right next to him in her conversation with, Nosy, right behind her. Those two are always talking to each other even thought I can tell they hate each other, UGHH and they are talking about what else, Sasuke. And now team 7, on second thought I don't care who's on my team as long as it's not with her, and her pretty boy too. Uzumaki Naruto, the blonde's head snaps up, and Haruno Sakura, and both Naruto and Sakura both put sour looks on their faces but Sakura shrieks in fear as her eyes spread white in shock. Behind them, Nozi, snidely says, ha, huh, nice knowing you Sakura. Clearing his throat Uruka pipes up with, and the last member of Team 7, Uchiha Sasuke. 
Jumping to her feet Sakura throws her hands in the air and cries, yes, victory is mine. Glaring over at his two new teammates, Naruto can't help himself and stands slamming his hands on the table. Hold on, why are you teaming me up with the Uchiha bastard and the useless Pinky? There is no way this team will work with two losers signed up. Sakura getting angry at being called useless thinks better at saying anything as she takes in the angry expression of the demon boy, but not Sasuke. Who are you calling a loser, lunatic? Sasuke's posture straightens in his seat as he stares down the dirty blonde. Naruto looks back and with a rather unimpressed look on his face and stares down the Uchiha. Shut up loser, before I headbutt your nose back in place. Sasuke gets to his feet and so does Naruto putting a foot up on the bench to stare each other down with Sakura trying to make herself smaller in between them. Naruto, Sasuke, if you listen you will understand why we have put you three together. Each squad is picked and paired depending on each other's skills complementing each other. Teams are assembled then based upon those experiences and skills, some are reconnaissance teams, others are tracking teams. Some will spend all of their missions on codes and intelligence, and others like yours as a combat squad. Sasuke and Naruto, you both had the high scores in Taijutsu and Shuriken classes but just okay in test scores, Sakura was the top of the class in both knowledge and Genjutsu ability. So with the combination of both of your physical strength with the knowledge and mental prowess of Sakura your team could be a force to be reckoned with. Growling at the impossibility of arguing with sound logic, Naruto's face sours as he looks askance at his two new teammates. He sits down and folds his arms as Aruka continues on to list off the last of the teams as he thinks on everything he knows about his two classmates. But the more he racks his brain he can't think of one thing he knows about them. When Aruka finishes calling out the names he tells the class that they will be pausing for a lunch break and recommends that each team take the time to get to know each other. Yeah, time to know what makes you two tick and how I can manipulate them to make both weaker than me so that I will push ahead and leave them in the dust. And with the bell ringing at noon the class disperses out the exits to whatever spot they decided to have lunch. And on the way out Naruto was followed by Sasuke, and Sakura was desperately trying to keep up calling out the whole way, Sasuke. By the time most had made it outside Sasuke had lost Naruto among the crowd. Looking back and forth he couldn't see the the blonde troublemaker anywhere and as he scanned the outer buildings his thoughts were interrupted by the pink head that was now in front of him. Hey Sasuke, since we're both on the same team now, I was thinking we could have lunch together. You know, so we can get to know each other. She stands there with a smile so big her eyes are closed that she doesn't notice that Sasuke has walked around her and begins searching for Naruto. By the time she notices Sasuke walking away she's too far away to call out to him as he jumps to a nearby rooftop. That's so sad, neither of my teammates are very social, looks like I'm having lunch alone. Sakura walks over to the nearby concrete bench and sits down to unwrap her bento box not noticing one of her teammates watching from the top of a tower overlooking the courtyard. Naruto stares down at the easy target setting up for lunch, looking in the direction Sasuke went a plan starts to form in his mind. With a few quick hand signs ending in the Nazumi sign, Naruto shimmers then disappears as he calls out, transparency jutsu. On a nearby rooftop teammate is hanging out eating their lunch, or at least one team member was eating enough for all three of them. As Choji chows down on rice ball after rice ball Ino lectures an annoyed looking Shikamaru about the future of the team's dynamic. Ino, will you quit being such a drag, we've known each other all our lives and you know we are together to keep the Ino Shika Cho combo going. So relax already and wait with all the orders, we're going to be under the command of a Jonin so we don't need another bossy person around. Ino's growl pulls Shikamaru away from his cloud watching to look at a very pissed off looking girl. Uhhhg, why do I have to be with such slackers, if I was only on Sasuke's team instead of forehead girl? Crossing her arms across her chest she turns her attention across the street to one of the buildings a few stories shorter than their own. Looking down where she is looking Shikamaru can't contain the words, what a drag, is that why you chose this spot, because Sasuke is eating lunch in that window. Ino responds only with a hum as she leans on the railing staring at her crush. For that one moment they all have their attention trained on Sasuke as he eats his own lunch while leaning out the window. 
and in that one moment of absolute normalcy each one of them could not expect what happened to Sasuke next. While mid bite Sasuke's head suddenly slams down on the window railing as if he had bent at the waist and bowed. Reeling from the head trauma Sasuke falls back to the ground and rolls out of sight. Team 8 can only watch in shock as they look through an empty window as they hear the sounds of a struggle and Sasuke cry out, What are you doing, Naruto? Ino's angry face tightens as she raises her fist, Naruto, if you hurt Sasuke you will be on my enemy list for life. The sound of more crashing and noise from the struggle can be heard, and Shikamaru says over his shoulder, Yeah, you threatening and actually telling Naruto what to do, I can totally see you getting away with that. A few seconds after the sound of the fight dies down they all see Sasuke jump out of the window and run away. Huh, I knew my Sasuke would win, he's too cool to be taken by surprise. Ino standing looking rather smitten watches Sasuke's retreating back. Choji looks at Shikamaru's thoughtful expression wondering what was on his mind. Naruto, you attacked Sasuke without him noticing you, and even I couldn't see you attack him. And by the look at that attack you were standing right next to him so that means you can become invisible. What a drag. Back at the benches Sakura finishes her light lunch and sits thinking on Team 7. True love conquers after all, Sasuke and I being on the same team is just fate telling as we are meant to be together. But he totally ignored me when I asked him to have lunch with me, I figured since we were on the same team we would have lunch together to get to know each other better. But with Naruto on the team he's going to distract Sasuke from paying attention to me, and besides he's so crazy he might even try to kill me. Sitting up looking at the sky her memories over the years of the raven-haired boy and the blonde run across her eyes. Images of the two in almost constant combat, the scary looks Naruto would give her, and the totally indifferent looks Sasuke would shoot her and all the other girls around. Sighing dreamily she whispers out, Sasuke, and as her eyes train down to the tops of the trees and then to their trunks she finds Sasuke standing there staring at her as if she had summoned him with his name. He's staring straight at me, and he's, smiling. Oh what am I going to do, what if he talks to me, what if he wants to hold hands, or what if he wants to kiss? Wait, common soccer a true love works slowly, there is no way he would want to spend time with me. Sakura, her head snaps up to look at Sasuke walk to stand right in front her. The look on your face is so precious, I feel like I should take a picture to remember it forever. Sakura in her amazement just stares, but inner Sakura pumps a fist into the air and yells, Cha cha cha, who's the hottest, me, that's right. But her happiness is short-lived as Sasuke takes the seat next to her saying, just kidding. So Sakura, I want to ask you what you think about our team. What are your strengths, and more importantly what do you think about Naruto? He looks her in the eye giving her a soft searching expression like all he wanted was the truth. Oh Sasuke, let me tell you about me, I'm named after a cherry blossom, my favorite food is okonomiyaki, and I really like taking walks through the trees, do you want to go for a walk? Huh Sakura, that's not quite what I meant, I mean I don't know much about my new teammates, what do you think about Naruto being on our team? Sasuke leans forward to place his arms on his knees and fold his hands in front of his face in his brooding way. Frowning at Sasuke bringing up Naruto again she looks into the sky, Naruto, has always been a problem. He shows up and ruins everything no matter what. He's brutish, nasty, and downright evil sometimes. Sasuke's concerned eyes turn to Sakura as she continues, I don't know what's wrong with him, I don't know why he's so mad all the time. Nobody is nice to him and everyone either hates him or is scared to be around him. And he smells too. Sasuke leans back at this information and snorts out a laugh. Amazed at the progress they were making with each other she smiles and tries a new tactic. Sasuke, we can't trust what Naruto is going to do, he's way too unpredictable. Since we're on the same team we are going to have to learn to work together and look out for Naruto. Turning to face her he tilts his head to the side, you're right. We're on the same team, so we're going to have to learn to look out for each other. Sakura in this moment thinks her life couldn't get any better until a thought crosses her mind, Sasuke, this means you care about me, right? As she says the last word her eyes start to gloss as they slowly close and she leans in slightly pursing her lips. Frowning and looking slightly confused Sasuke looks at the face closing the gap between them. Just like before, 
When someone else's face came in this close, nerves he normally doesn't feel make him shake. But different than before, when those nerves went off earlier he could only think of getting away somehow, now he was filled with a nervous anticipation he's never felt. Now this feeling makes his body involuntarily lean in closer till their foreheads touch, and looking into her eyes he sees emotion that he has no words for. Sakura lightly bites her bottom lip as she stares into Sasuke's eyes, it's true, I'm desperate for you, with her lips slightly apart her eyes close all the way as she moves just a little bit closer. Turning his head just a little bit he doesn't have to move far to lock lips with the pink girl. He could hear her heartbeat climb as her lips start to delicately pull on his. And the sound of their first kiss reaches their ears, without thinking they both get closer, her arms wrapping around his neck and his hands on her hip and small of her back. Their lips connect again, and again sliding and pulling at each other's lips making that small sound as their kiss becomes more passionate and deep. What in the hell is going on here? The harsh sound of the voice broke them apart making Sakura feel like she had been caught being bad by Aruka. But what she sees doesn't register in her brain in the first few seconds, what is Sasuke doing over there if he is right here with me? Looking at the boy she was just lip locked with her eyes search his for an answer to her confusion. And her answer came as the embodiment of her love and desire transforms back into the dirty orange blonde who has been ruining her life. Her hands cover her mouth in shock as she sounds like she stifles a cry, and Naruto stands to walk up and away behind her. Stop right there Naruto, you have some answers I want. Turning around with his hands in his pockets, Naruto smiles back at Sasuke, what, are you going to make me, after today I really doubt you could. You son of a bitch, Sakura had jumped to her feet and catching Naruto completely by surprise slammed a fist into his face. And by the time she finished the word, Bitch, Naruto is flying backwards spinning in the air with a nose bleed trailing behind him. Naruto props himself up with one elbow as he holds his cheek with the other while looking at the steaming mad pink haired girl. I can't believe you did that, by Kami I would never kiss you, you are now officially evil, the only reason I kissed you or I would ever kiss you is because I thought you were Sasuke, you bastard. Realizing what she had just said she nervously peeks back at the real Sasuke to gauge his response. But his attention wasn't on her at all, he was focused glaring at Naruto who had now gotten to his feet. So, start talking, why did you attack me earlier, why are you going around kissing girls henged as me, and just what the hell is wrong with you kid? Pumping her fist and intensifying her glare at Naruto she chimes in, yeah, start talking Naruto. Brushing himself off Naruto looks between the two angry faces and laughs at the new information he's learned about them. Well Sasuke, you and me have been fighting for years so I know how well you fight. But now I just wanted to test out a new jutsu of mine, and if I can use it as well as I did against you then it's gonna be a lot of fun to pull off later. And Sakura for all I knew today was useless, but to be honest, she can hit harder than you. I was taken by surprise since I thought she had no talent whatsoever, but surprise surprise, she has a cannon on that shoulder. Looking less angry but still livid Sakura's vein on her forehead twitches, so why did you kiss me like that, you set me up for this, have you been planning this or what? Humph, I didn't plan anything, I came here transformed into him to get information from you, and to find out if you two are just a couple of scared children. I can't work with fear, but hate, now that is the power of shinobi. Sakura's angry expression pulls into confusion, and Sasuke listened even more intently if that is possible. Hate gives you strength and focus, hate can fuel you to push further and accomplish more. Hate makes you see your objective and strike down all in your path to get it. I learned the truth about you too, you both can hate so you can become ninja, like me. And you're the one who tried to kiss me. Turning his back on both of them he starts to walk away heading back to the academy. And besides I thought I would do you a favor anyway, you know Sasuke is never going to kiss you, I think he plays for the other team. It was a strange sound that reached his ears, strange enough he had to stop. Even stranger now that the hairs on the back of his head start to stand sensing danger. The sound was like stepping on a twig in the forest, loud and echoing. If he had turned around earlier when he said the word, team, he would have seen that the strange sound had happened when both Sasuke and Sakura's faces instantly turned murderous. And with the shouted name of, Naruto, 
Like a starting gunshot all three members began a strange chase that circled the academy five times. Lunch was over, like over three hours ago. The only team left waiting for their Jonan sensei in the classroom was Team 7. They were happy at first for the chance to rest after their strange chase, but now Naruto was pacing, Sakura was looking depressed and Sasuke, well Sasuke's face doesn't change much but if annoyance had a sitting position he was in it. After another 20 minutes Naruto had had enough, and walking over to the door with a chair in tow he slides open the door and peeks out. Standing on the chair he takes out one of the kanai from his leg holster and pins the knife at the top of the door. Naruto, can you please stop being evil and crazy for an hour, do you think you can do that? Jumping off the chair and kicking it in the direction of where he got it from he looks up at Sakura, flattery makes you cuter Sakura, whatever, I do what I want and what I want is to prank this bastard for making me wait. HNN, our teacher is a Jonan, I doubt he's going to fall for a simple trap like that. And just like if fate was listening a sound reaches their ears telling them someone is at the door. Anticipation spreads across the genin's faces as the door slides open and the knife falls with gravity. Eyes wide taking in the path of the kanai they watch as it falls all the way to the floor to embed itself in the sandal of the masked jonin in the door. Laughing hard Naruto points and taunts, Sakura desperately tries to explain while laughing on the inside and Sasuke just looks like he always does, like he doesn't care about anyone or anything. Bending over to pick up the kanai lodged in between his toes the silver hair ninja stands examining the knife not looking at the students in the room. HMMN, now let me see here, my first impression of this team, you're a bunch of sociopaths. Sweat dropping at the comment team 7 takes in the bored looking majesty that is Kakashi sensei. Konoha, with its trees spread throughout. The village lives up to its name and helps lend the ninja living here the unfortunate nickname, Tree Huggers. Just like the rooftop of the academy that the newly formed Team 7 now occupied, there were trees at their backs growing out of the roof and their silver-haired sensei was in front of them leaning on the railing by the edge of the roof. Kakashi takes in the view of his new team, all of them had scratches, dirt and small bruises forming on different parts of their bodies, hum, looks like they got into a fight earlier. If it was with each other then this is already starting to look hopeless. Well now, let's start getting to know each other. Kakashi's face doesn't convey any other emotion, just that glazed lazy eye the only window into the quiet masked man. Introduce yourselves. It's always strange to see someone raise their hand to speak, and a little bit of annoyed amusement can be seen in Naruto's eyes watching Sakura sit there with her hand up. But, what do you mean sensei? Why don't you tell us about you first so we can understand? Pointing at himself Kakashi's eyebrow raises, Me, I'm Hitaki Kakashi, let's see things I like and things I hate, I don't feel like telling you that. My dreams for the future, HMMN it hasn't really been on my mind, and as for hobbies, I have lots of hobbies but it would be irresponsible of me to describe them out loud. Sakura looking to Sasuke whispers, that info was useless, all he really told us was his name. All right, you there on the left, the blonde one. Why don't you star? Naruto interrupts before Kakashi can finish, pass. Raising an eyebrow at the blatant disrespect, you pass huh, why is that? One of Kakashi's arms unfold and points a finger at the pink and raven-haired members of Team 7. If you are all going to be on a team then it's important that your teammates get to know you, you know. It's a stupid exercise. They know my name already since we have spent years together in this damn academy. Naruto leans back on the steps and holds himself up with his elbows, so there is no point to this, let's hurry up with the training and get paid to kill people already. Sakura was the only one to show a response to Naruto's words, and the disbelief on her face at the idea of being paid to kill gave Kakashi the impression she was very naive about the reality of the profession she has chosen. Sasuke's eyes glinted slightly at Naruto's mention of killing and that too was a bad sign. Okay, moving right along, you in the middle go ahead. Right, my name is Sakura Haruno, what I like is, UHHM I mean the person I like is. Giggle, my hobbies are. Looking out the corner of her eye at Sasuke she barely contains her excitement. My dream for the future is. Losing all control she squeals in delight at her inner fantasies. And, what do you hate? Grabbing the bottom of her dress as her face pulls in anger as she looks back to Kakashi before her eyes turn to the only blonde present, what do you think? 
Naruto chuckles at this as Kakashi has a few thoughts on the spiteful and distracted mind of teenage girls. Okay. Then, now you, the quiet one. It's your turn. Sakura turns with excitement to hear what Sasuke has to say, while both Naruto and Kakashi looked like they were barely interested or listening. Sasuke does not move, just sits there with his elbows on his knees and hands in front of his face as he speaks. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. I hate a lot of things, two of which are right here, and I don't really care about anything else. Sakura's happy expression disappears and is replaced by worry, and what I have is not a dream but an ambition I will make reality. I will restore my clan, and kill, a certain someone. Everyone's expression is different after taking in Sasuke's words, and all are lost in their own thoughts. But Naruto's are darker, restore your clan huh? Memories of bright red Sharingan piercing his eyes compelling him to forget his will cross his mind, I won't let another Uchiha clan rise again, whatever Kami is in charge of human fate has given me the chance to stop this would be upstart right in his place. Naruto is still lost in his thoughts and barely hears Kakashi talking to the team, it had to be the greatest human news I've ever heard of when the entire Uchiha clan was killed by one of their own, I think his name was Itachi. So that is the one this little Sharingan less kid must want to kill, and if he killed all of them then he must have that mutated form of eye power called the. Naruto's thoughts are interrupted by the sound of Kakashi saying, Naruto, it really is your turn now. And I'm not taking no for an answer, these two may have had the, uh, privilege, of getting to know you in the past, but I haven't. So go ahead and let's hear what you've got to say. Glowering at the Jonin Naruto also notices the attention of Sakura and even Sasuke was looking at him out the corner of his eye. So they're curious about me huh? I'll have to word this carefully. Not moving from his relaxed position Naruto trains his crimson eyes on the three. Well if you insist dog. My name, as you all already know, is Naruto, the things I like are new jutsu, hunting, making bastards pay for crossing me, and even that hot noodle soup called ramen. What I hate is people, and my dreams for the future is power in the path of conquest, I will become the most powerful ninja the world will ever know. Sakura's expression at Naruto's statements bring worried confusion to her face, and Sasuke thinks to himself, power huh, so we have some things in common, but I will leave you all behind as I discover my Uchiha power. Kakashi pauses to let the words of all three sink in, well that's interesting, I have one who's only interested in one of them and two who seem to not care about anything but themselves. There is no way they're gonna pass tomorrow with these attitudes. And Naruto called me dog, was that an insult or does he know about me? Well, now that we understand each other better, I'll tell you about this team's first mission, these words got everyone's undivided attention, a survival exercise. Narrowing his eyes at the masked Jonin, Naruto asks, wait what, it's not a real mission, why are you wasting my time like this? Yeah sensei. Sakura's disappointed face turns to Kakashi, we did all this in the academy already, so why do we need more training now? Kakashi laughs at Sakura's expression, well, the academy was just to prepare you all for this day, the day we see who is going to be ninja by weeding out the hopeless and the insane. Kakashi's eye was going to each member on Team 7 and stopped on his last word at Naruto, which elicited a glare and growl from the blonde. Continuing on unfazed by the looks Kakashi was getting from the teens, and let me tell you all that the chances of all 27 academy graduates not making it to be real ninja is about 66%. But by the look of this group I'd say that it's more like 85% since all three of you have shown me several personality disorders already. This will be a make it or break it test to prove to me in the village that you're ready to be real ninja. All three teens thoughts turn inward at this information, one thinking on the power of love, another on the need for revenge, and the last thinking a little darkly throwing me another obstacle in my way huh, if you think you can stop me then I've got a few surprises for you. Alright, you will all report to training ground 7 at 6am, and bring your ninja gear. Oh, and you all better skip breakfast, or else you'll puke. Bleary-eyed Sakura walks into the clearing seeing Naruto sitting on the top of one of three logs in training ground 7 and Sasuke walking up, but his eyes were alert and indifferent. They all deposit their backpacks on the ground. Sakura sits down on her pack while Sasuke stands looking anywhere but at his team. Naruto starts looking around and taking a sniff at the breeze, then listening with his advanced hearing for any sign of Kakashi. 
After hearing nothing but two rumbling stomachs he jumps up into the nearby tree taking advantage of his high altitude to survey the land, and still no Jonan. Naruto decides to lean back against the tree and take a nap, he's nowhere for a couple of miles, so if he's gonna be late then I'm just gonna take a nap. And for the next five hours they stayed that way, Sasuke keeping an eagle's eye out for the tardy Jonan, Sakura sitting on her backpack with her head steadily hanging down lower and lower, and Naruto sleeping in his tree. Finally Kakashi could be seen walking up to the group, and when he finally made it to the team he waves and says, Good morning everyone, sorry I'm late but on my way here I stopped to help a young woman carry her groceries home, and it took longer to leave her apartment than I originally thought it would. Kakashi was thinking to himself that the looks on Sakura and Sasuke's faces were priceless, if the word scandalous in the dictionary had a picture of a facial expression next to it then the example was looking at him. Alright let's get started. Pulling a kunai out of his back holster Kakashi looks up in the tree at the sleeping form of Naruto and throws the blade. Before the blade can impact the tree trunk just above where Naruto's head was, the little blonde turns to fall off his perch and land on all fours on the ground glaring at Kakashi. Standing up raising a fist at the Jonin, Naruto barks, what the hell is the matter with you, throwing a knife at me? Oh Naruto, you're awake now, that's good. I was worried that you would miss out on our training if you kept sleeping there, and as for the knife. Well, I guess we can call ourselves even now, a kunai for a kunai. As Team 7 follows Kakashi over by the memorial stone and the three large wooden posts they watch as Kakashi takes out an alarm clock and puts it on a sawed-off tree stump. After setting the alarm he turns around and says, Alright, now I will explain the survival exercise. Pulling two bells out of his pocket Kakashi holds them out for all three to see. You just have to take these bells from me. Both of them, Sasuke asks. Sort of, he pauses to tie the bells to the bottom of his vest. The only way to pass this test and become a true leaf ninja is to have a bell before noon. If you don't get a bell, then you get tied to one of those posts and get to watch us eat our lunch. And, since there are only two bells, then one of you will flunk out and go back to the academy. Kakashi pauses again and waits as he sees the cogs working through the teens' brains at this new information. Sakura looked horrified, Sasuke's eyes narrow thinking, so that's why, he told us to skip breakfast to make it harder for us. And as if cued by Sasuke's thought both his and Sakura's stomachs growl loudly, but not Naruto's. Kakashi takes in their appearances, Sakura and Sasuke's grumbling stomachs, the bluish bags under their eyes, and slight slumped stances show these two haven't eaten or slept well at all. But not Naruto. Now all three glares turn to Naruto as all three realize the same information. Kakashi puts one hand on his hip and points a finger at Naruto with the other. Well Naruto, I can see you're not very good in listening to instructions, I did warn you yesterday not to eat anything for this test. Sakura balls her fists and turns to the blonde, yeah Naruto. What is your problem? You even took a nap, so how is that fair? Folding his arms and snorting at her, whatever, Pinky, it's not my fault you two weren't smart enough to take a nap while we waited for the tardy Cyclops. And as for skipping eating today, I could tell he is a liar, and besides, I have never thrown up before and don't plan on it today. Scratching his chin, Kakashi raises his eyebrow and looks down at Naruto. HMMN, you've never thrown up before, huh? Well, I'll have to do something about that, after all it's usually the overconfident ones who get their noses pushed into the mud. Something you should be used to by now, eh Naruto? Naruto's looks pissed off as his hand goes to his kunai holster. Now each of you must come at me with the intent to kill, or else there will be no way you can get these bells. You can use any weapons including shuriken. Good, Naruto rushes at Kakashi moving so fast that to Sakura's eyes he was moving in a blur. While running Naruto's eyes were focused on his silver-haired prey, and it was a good thing they were. By Naruto's sixth step Kakashi appears to vanish to the other two members of Team 7, but Naruto could barely see the fast blur of Kakashi. He was moving to come at him from behind, so as fast as he could he pivots and launches the shuriken at where Kakashi was going to come at him from. Kakashi seems to materialize behind Naruto, but is still fast enough to dodge the steel stars thrown at him. Still trying to press his attack Naruto continues his spin and launches a jump spinning wheel kick at the Jonin's head, 
who ducks and rushes forward to grab on of Naruto's arms and pull it up behind his back and his other hand grabbing the blonde's hair. To Sakura's amazement this whole altercation happened in less than two seconds barely seeing the two of them moving and all she can thinks is, so fast. Sasuke was taken back by the exchange too, I could barely see Kakashi move, but so could Naruto. He used to be the second fastest in the academy, but now he might be just as fast as I am. I can't wait to show both of them they haven't seen anything yet. Struggling against the Jonin's grip was only causing pain so he relaxed slightly listen to Kakashi's words. Now now, I didn't say start yet. But color me surprised Naruto, you were actually coming at me with the intent to kill. So, how can I say this, I'm actually looking forward to this exercise. Letting go of Naruto with a push he takes a few steps back to his team Kakashi then puts up his hand with his index finger pointed up and eye closed. All right, ready, and start. Sarutobi sits in his office with his hands on either side of the glowing chakra seeing orb which is passed down to each Hokage. Looking into the crystal he can see the action unfolding on training ground 7. Watching Kakashi and his new team had interested him enough to skip this morning's paperwork to be able to watch. He remembers just the other day going with Kakashi to inspect Naruto's apartment so they each can get clues into his personality. What both of them saw shocked them. The pillows and lack of furniture was odd, but finding the bloody refrigerator made both of them inspect the contents closely, just to be sure there weren't any human pieces in there. Naruto's apartment had taught them two things about the strange aggressive boy. One was that Naruto didn't live or think like any other human in the village. And two, he was acting more like an animal or a crazy person. Sarutobi asked Kakashi as they left the dirty apartment to use his test to determine whether or not Naruto has the right state of mind to become a leaf ninja. Naruto, with the mindset, attitude, and anger you show everyone around you makes me fear letting you learn even more jutsu. I don't want to have another ninja raised to turn out like Orochimaru again, especially since you were one more child to have the honor of going through the bell test. After a few minutes pass, Kakashi is alone in the clearing after watching the three teens scatter away to the trees. A ninja must be able to conceal their movements and effectively hide from an enemy. Looking around and peering into the shadows in the trees or bushes show no sign of the young would-be ninjas. Well, at least they know that much, they're well hidden. Huh. The sound of something rushing through the leaves in the trees alerted him to turn around. And what he sees is Naruto rocketing through the air towards him, body stiff straight like he was flying. Facing me head on huh, I think someone is underestimating me. Naruto continuing on his flight lifts his knees to his chest and then straightens both feet out trying to slam his heels into Kakashi's chest. The blonde continues on course when Kakashi just steps out of the way to watch Naruto fly harmlessly away, huh. Another sound comes to his attention behind him a screeching sound followed by the smell of burning wood. At this point time seems to slow down as Kakashi's sharp eyes and quick mind take in the events happening very fast around him. Turning towards the sound, Kakashi's eye widens when he sees ninja razor wire wrapped around the tree Naruto was sleeping on earlier. Then following the shine from the near invisible wires, he can see that Naruto is holding on to the ends and his momentum was now making him swing horizontally bringing the wires close to the Jonin who quickly hops a couple of feet in the air to dodge the razors. But Naruto sees Kakashi's reaction and in that millisecond smiles. Naruto then extends his arms spreading the wires apart and spins his body, the effect is that instead of passing under the Jonin one of the wires now passes over Kakashi. Naruto still mid-swing then pulls the wires tight making them cross creating a scissor cut towards Kakashi's torso. Kakashi can see the wires closing in on him, no, those will cut me in half. Pulling his feet together Kakashi leans back like the world's best limbo artist, and time seems to slow even more as the wires close in on him. Following the lean back he uses the tips of his sandals to tap the wires giving him the momentum to finish the back flip back to the ground letting the wires pass right by. Time starts back at a normal rate again as his heart slows a few beats. When Kakashi lands on all fours he watches Naruto continue his swing and pulls out a shuriken. Throwing the weapon he cuts the wires sending Naruto falling to the ground. Naruto lands on his feet sliding in the dirt to come to a stop. Spinning around the blonde looks left, right, up, and down, 
but before he can look behind him he hears, you shouldn't let people get behind you. Looking over his left shoulder he can see Kakashi knelt down with his hands held in the tiger sign. Leaf Village Secret Jutsu, getting the finger, in more than a figurative way, Naruto is shot into the air as Kakashi yells, a thousand years of death. Naruto's howl of pain bounces off the trees as he flies through the air heading towards the river where he splashes face first into the water. Sakura and Sasuke were both watching the whole exchange, Sakura's mouth was wide open in the beginning at the deadly attack Naruto started with but ended in a disappointed look on her face. I thought he was going to kill Naruto, but all he did was stick him in the ass. They're both just a bunch of idiots, Sasuke starts reaching for his shuriken seeing Kakashi's back to him and a little orange book in his hand. Then Naruto bursts back out of the water and begins to stalk towards Kakashi with a murderous look on his face. No one has ever done that to Meee. -E -E. At the last word six more Naruto's burst out of the water and all seven of them rush the Jonin. Spreading his feet slightly Kakashi watches the blonde horde running towards him but another feeling caught his immediate attention around his waist. There was a tugging on the bells, looking down he can see them being pulled away from him from behind, but, there's nothing grabbing at them, I can't see anything. Making a knife hand with his left he took a chance and swiped his arm back at the height Naruto would be if he was there stealing the bells behind him. The wild strike makes contact and a shimmer-like liquid mirror in the shape of a small teen bends at the strike then explodes into smoke as the clone jutsu is dispelled. Quickly looking back at the fast approaching group of Naruto's, so shadow clones weren't the only jutsu you learned from the scroll Hanaruto. He knows the transparency jutsu, so not only can he make himself some back up, but some will be invisible. The seven Naruto's jump into the air and each had a kunai pointed at various kill spots on Kakashi. Alright Naruto I'll give you credit, you have talent but you're missing the crucial element to beat me. The sound of three heavy thumps hit the tall Jonin, one on each leg and one on his back, each one invisible clones. And the one on Kakashi's back leans close to his ear and says, surprise. Is that what I was missing, well then surprise. From the trees and a set of bushes, Sakura and Sasuke watch as the seven Naruto's stab into the trapped Jonin in shock. But what they were seeing changes right before their eyes. What was once Kakashi in the invisible hold is now one of the Naruto clones with the sharp pain of being stabbed stretched across his face right before puffing to smoke. Stopping for a second all nine now visible Naruto's all look down at the ground thinking. One Naruto in particular runs his hand over the spots on his torso and neck where his clone had been stabbed. Each clone was working over the information it just received from the expelled clone. And now Naruto knows what it feels like to be stabbed. Now looking as if each of them coming back to reality, all nine Naruto's start looking around for Kakashi. One stops and stares at the ground by the tree he had set his wires while he was napping earlier. On the ground in the shadow of the tree were the two bells from Kakashi's vest. Tapping one of the others the clone tells all of them about his find, then they each discuss among themselves in a close huddle. They were whispering at such a volume not one of the other three watching them could hear. After a couple seconds of talking, one Naruto rushes at the bells, then gets caught in the trap set by Kakashi. Then two more sprint towards the bells as the first is pulled into the air, their eyes alert for hidden traps and wires. Right before the two new Naruto's make within arm's length of the bells Kakashi comes out of nowhere landing two feet on each clone's heads popping them into smoke. Kakashi stands up holding the bells in his left hand looking the last six Naruto's down. Well that trap allowed me to get rid of three of you. It's too bad, two of your traps haven't worked so what are you going to try now aaah? Kakashi had turned his back to the trees where Sasuke was hiding, and taking the chance to strike he launched a couple handfuls of shuriken and kunai. They struck him at his last word to Naruto, making the jonin start to fall to the ground. Naruto sees his opportunity and all six of him rush in with kunai raised, this is it dog mask, die. As Kakashi hits the ground and Naruto's knives make contact the Jonin pops into a log, once again tricking Naruto with the substitution jutsu. At this the clones disappear all Naruto can do is roar out his frustration. RRRAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
Sakura was running as fast as she could through the forest, desperately trying to keep up with the sound of what she thought was Sasuke running away. Lost in her own thoughts she has barely enough time to stop herself from running into Kakashi standing in a clearing reading his book. Pissed, Sakura, behind you. Spinning as fast as she can to face Kakashi she realizes too late that she had fallen into a trap, and Kakashi seals her fate putting his hands together and forming the seal placing her into a worst fear genjutsu. Kakashi barely watches Sakura freak out out of the corner of his eye as he reads his book. Walking away into the clearing when she faints he can only shake his head, falling for a simple genjutsu, you learned about it in the academy, but if she doesn't learn how to see these things she won't get anywhere. Right Sasuke. Stepping out from the bushes since he had been found out, Sasuke faces Kakashi in the clearing. You may have used those cheap tricks to get the others, but I'm different than them. HMMN, say that after you get on of these bells, my Sasuke. Kakashi chides the small Uchiha, but still keeps his eye on him from above his book. Staring each other down for what feels like a minute Kakashi thinks that he might have to start this fight himself when Sasuke suddenly crouches down to launch shuriken at the Jonin. Kakashi dodges bringing him into a slide by the tree. Sasuke launches his kanai at the rope setting off the trap he had set up, and now Kakashi has no choice but to jump again to dodge the shuriken, right to where Sasuke was planning on him to go. As fast as Sasuke can he leaps behind Kakashi so fast it's as if he appears out of nowhere. Sasuke launches a spinning back kick at Kakashi's head who grabs his foot giving Sasuke the chance to throw a punch at the Jonin's face. Kakashi easily catches the fist and high blocks the team's follow-up downward kick. The kick had spun Sasuke around giving him the vantage he wanted, Kakashi with both hands occupied above his head and the bells unguarded. Kakashi's eye widens as he realizes it too, and all he can do is jump back as Sasuke reaches for and touches the bells. Both stop and stare at each other, damn, that's two of them that have touched the bells, I won't be able to read Make Out Paradise today. Sasuke's eyes narrow and a small smirk tugs the corner of his mouth as he thinks of his next attack. Putting his hands together he forms the signs Kakashi has seen over and over from Uchiha of the past. What? Genin can't do fire jutsu, it takes too much chakra, there's no way. Sasuke's head leans back and his right hand comes up to his mouth to perform the Uchiha patented Grand Fireball Jutsu. The ball of fire spews forward and enlarges at the spot Kakashi is standing making an intense blaze. When Sasuke is done, all there is left is a smoldering crater with a small hole in the center, but no body. Sasuke, realizing that the Jonin must have gotten away starts looking around for him. Where, the only place he hadn't looked was down which was where Kakashi's hand had burst out from under Sasuke grabbing a hold of his ankle. A surprised shout is all Sasuke can get out as he is pulled under the ground up to his neck in the dirt and rocks. Kakashi rises out of the ground next to Sasuke's exposed head, that was Earth-style, headhunter jutsu. Can't move huh, you say you're different than the others, but Naruto actually had his hand on the bells, so different is not always better. Pulling out his book and walking away he says over his shoulder, they say that the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. Sasuke struggles to get himself free of the dirt, but it was like every inch of him was covered with not one pocket of air to move. And he keeps struggling long after Kakashi had left the clearing, struggling and struggling until he hears a rustling in the bushes and the sound of someone running towards the clearing. Someone's coming, I don't want anyone to see me like this runs through Sasuke's mind as he struggles even harder than before, but to no avail as Naruto comes running into the clearing. Naruto looks left and immediately stops when he sees Sasuke's head sticking out of the ground, and after a very small moment as they each exchange confused look Naruto bends over backwards laughing so hard that he looks like he is having convulsions. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A, Sasuke you look different, did you lose some weight, H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-A, look at the bright side huh, at least he didn't bury you head first. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-
connecting his thumbs together and lifting both index fingers so that Sasuke's head could be seen between them. To Sasuke, he can see Naruto's eyes between his fingers, and it seems like Naruto is taking aim right at him. You know what Sasuke, I haven't kicked a field goal in a long time, sliding his right foot back and bending his knees he prepares for his running kick, now don't move Lucy. Sasuke's eyes widen for a moment then narrow as he thinks, this is bad, I don't think he's joking around. With a quick laugh Naruto's legs twitch and he starts his run, and fate decided to step in and save Sasuke because Sakura chose that moment to run out of the bushes just as Naruto had done. As she notices Naruto standing there she comes to a complete stop mid-step with confusion on her face. When she turns her head and sees Sasuke it takes a few seconds for what she sees to process. Then she starts screaming hysterically, Ah Naruto killed Sasuke and all that's left is his head noo Sakura had too much stress and drops unconscious right on the spot, which was too much for Naruto who started laughing as loud as Sakura had been screaming. After Naruto's laughter stops he wipes the tear from his eye and rubs his now sore belly. Remembering that he was about to kick Sasuke he bends his knees to take his runner's stance again and looks down to see that Sasuke had finally dug himself out and was walking to Sakura. Ah too bad Sasuke, it would have been really funny to see how far I could have kicked your headband. Naruto stands with his arms crossed smiling at Sasuke to see if he would challenge him. Shut up Naruto, I'll deal with you later, for now I need to pass this test. Sasuke finishes dusting himself off as he walks the last few steps to Sakura, he bends down and shakes her shoulder, Sakura, wake up. The motion on her shoulder slowly wakes her up, and as her eyes open she sees the object of her desire, oh Sasuke, you're alive. She lunges forward and grabs Sasuke around the neck trying to pull him into a hug. Damn it Sakura, let go. Sasuke pushes her off him and walks a few steps putting his back to them. I have to go get a bell before noon. Naruto laughs a few times at this, like you could, I bet you didn't land one hit against him, did you? Turning to face Naruto he growls out, you're not one to talk, I saw you fall for that substitution jutsu earlier and that proves you're a loser. Sakura can only look between them holding her hand to her chin, expecting the two boys to start fighting any second. But, Instead Naruto shows a rare moment of restraint and puts his hands on his hips and smiles. You know what, you're not that very perceptive are you, you Kai Ha. Well it's not surprising since you don't have the Sharingan, hey does that mean you haven't hit puberty yet? Again Naruto's laughter fills the clearing at his own jokes, but Sakura had had enough. Naruto, take everyone's advice and shut up. You can't stand up to Sasuke since he is the number one rookie in our class and better than you in everything. Naruto pouts and actually looks hurt at Sakura's words, Oh come on Sakura, you and I both know that I am a way better kisser than he is. Sakura's face turns murderous and she cracks her knuckles at him saying between her teeth, Naru too. Both of you shut up, you're driving me crazy. Now I'm going to go get the bells. He starts walking towards the direction Kakashi walked away. Looking at his back Sakura calls out, but Sasuke, Kakashi sensei is just too powerful for all of us, maybe we should give up and try again next year. Stopping in his tracks he glares back at Sakura, then looks down to the ground, no, there's no going backwards for me, I need this training so I can face him. Time wasn't on their sides because they could all hear the bell from Kakashi's clock go off through the trees signaling noon. Back at the memorial stone team 7 assembles once again. All three teens are standing in front of the wooden posts with Kakashi standing in front of them. The mood is tense and no one says anything for a loud noise breaks the silence coming from two of the teens, GGGGGRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
Sakura though can't hold her excitement anymore and proclaims, so that means that all three of us have pa. Yes, Kakashi interrupts before she can finish, all three of you, have failed and are going to be dropped from the program, permanently. All three teens' reactions happened simultaneously, but all three were uniquely different. Sakura's face was mortified, Sasuke's was angry, and Naruto, well Naruto had a strange I know something you don't know look on his face. And Naruto's face and small laugh had caught all three of the other team members' attentions. You finding something funny about what I said Naruto, I'll say it again, you have all failed. Kakashi's curiosity was piqued, he is usually good at setting people up emotionally to his advantage, but Naruto has to be the most unpredictable ninja ever. Staring Kakashi right in the eye, and making sure the others were looking too, he slowly brings his right hand out of his pocket, and holds out in front of him the two bells for all to see. The other three members of Team 7 all collectively say at the same time, what? Kakashi looks down at the bells still attached to his waist on his jacket, grabbing at them and giving them a shake they make the sound of the bells. Wait, the sound is wrong, and they are a little heavier than they should be. Pulling the fake bells free he throws them at the ground and they both pop with smoke twice. The first pop and they turn back into two Naruto clones, and the second pop they disappear entirely. Looking back at Naruto in shock he racks his memory for answers, when did he do it, how did he get past me? Thinking back he remembers when an invisible clone had his hands on the bells when he felt them being pulled. He had to have done it then, when I didn't know he could do the transparency jutsu, he made the clones to ambush me. And when I felt them being pulled must have been when he made the switch, this kid not only made a trap that came close to killing me but he was able to plan ahead and trick me. Not only did he make clones, he made them invisible and then hold a transformation. The number one rookie of the year may have been voted on prematurely, Naruto has learned at least two S-class techniques from the scroll and who knows what else he memorized. Sasuke had enough though, how Naruto, how did you do it, tell me. There's no way you passed ahead of me. Naruto looks over at Sasuke and is about to say something but gets cut off by Kakashi, no, he didn't, because I'm still failing all three of you. Kakashi waited for him to pause for a breath to interject, it's simple you didn't pass the fundamental reason for this test. And not only that, but you're all brats and you don't think the way ninja should. Not only Naruto, but Sasuke had enough so both jumped forward and rushed Kakashi at the same time. And before Sakura could tell what was happening Kakashi was sitting on Sasuke with Naruto on the bottom of the pile holding onto one each of the boy's arms twisted in a painful way. Let go of Sasuke, you can't treat him like a bum. Sakura feeling useless just standing there can only scream in frustration. Kakashi looks up at Sakura and says, you don't know what it means to be a ninja, you think it's all a game don't you? Why do you think we put you on a squad, did any of you think of that for one moment? None of you realized what this test was all about, not even close. That is what determines whether you pass or fail. So use your heads, why do you think we would put three people on a squad? Naruto tries moving out of Kakashi's hold again and gets his arm twisted even further. Grunting out of pain he growls through his teeth, why do I care that you picked three of us, I got your bells and passed. I should have knifed you instead. Oh man, it's just so basic, teamwork. That is how you pass this test. Realization dawns on each of their faces at what Kakashi was getting at. Sakura asks, you mean, we just had to work together, that's what you mean. That's what I mean. If you had worked together then you would have shown me the fundamental meaning of putting a squad together, and together you could have gotten the bells. Squirming again Naruto grunts out, I did get the bells, what are you deaf and stupid? So I don't need these two losers. Kakashi lets go of Sasuke's arm and pushes him to his feet, but then slams his foot back down onto Naruto's back pinning him again. That's what I'm talking about, you have the wrong thinking to be a ninja. But sensei, there were only two bells so that means even if we all worked together we would have had one of us still fail. So how could we work together if we knew one of us couldn't make it? Sakura's confused face kept going back and forth between looking at Kakashi and looking at Sasuke to see if the Jonin hurt him. Exactly, I wanted to see if any of you could work together for the betterment of the team and look past your own personal desires. But none of you think about anyone but yourselves, Jenin should have a natural feel for teamwork. 
Sakura, you obsessed about Sasuke this whole time not even thinking about a way to help her try and get a bell, obsession. Sasuke, you don't think anyone around you is useful or close to your skills, arrogance. And you Naruto, you do everything by yourself thinking that these two are worthless and even trying to flunk them out of the program by keeping both bells for yourself, narcissistic avarice. Standing up and pulling Naruto up with him, Kakashi shoves the blonde back to stand with the others then walked over in front of the memorial stone. You see Naruto, this survival exercise which was designed to show me not only you and your team's skills which I have to admit surprised me but also your ability to function as a ninja squad. Individual skill is necessary but to function as part of a team is so fundamental it's a surprise you don't understand that. It's how we conduct ninja missions and those who put themselves before the mission end up getting their teammates killed. Even the strongest, fastest, and most gifted ninja have teammates. Giving everything he just said a moment to sink in he turns sideways and points to the carved obsidian stone. Did any of you look at this stone, at the names engraved on it? They were all ninja who were KIA, each of them are forever remembered as heroes in this village. And do any of you know why? Each and every one of these names here either died in battle defending our village's freedom or in more to the point ended up dying to protect their teammates. The names of my closest friends are engraved here, people who were able to not only be thinking about accomplishing the mission but the safety of their teammates came first. Looking at the team again and seeing each of them working over the information in their heads he takes his chance to surprise them again. All right. I'm going to give you all one last chance to take the bells but I'm going to make this much harder than before. We'll all break for lunch and then you will have three hours to get a bell, and since Naruto was the only one to get a bell he gets to eat his lunch while you two get nothing. And I won't be tying Naruto to a stump, as for you two, well. Chomp. The sound of Naruto chewing loudly reverberates through the clearing, which causes Sasuke and Sakura to struggle even harder against the ropes tying them to the posts. But their struggling stops quickly when both of their stomachs growl loudly. Naruto slowly turns his head looking up from his lounging position in front of them and very slowly and deliberately takes another bite of his jerky and chews making sounds of pure enjoyment. Damn you Naruto, do you have to eat like that in front of us? Sakura yells out her frustrations at Naruto but doesn't even have the energy for that when her stomach argues with a loud grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
what's important is getting those bells and we need the energy to beat Kakashi. So quit complaining and eat them. Looking at Sasuke and looking sad at his harsh words she looks back at Naruto and nods firmly. Naruto nods at the two of them and throws the balls into the air above their heads, and both of them lean their heads back and catch the pills in their mouths. Chomping down the pills crunch loudly and when each of them swallow they feel the instant energy and an odd not heavy full stomach feeling. Then all of a sudden Kakashi makes a grand entrance with a loud bang and smoke leaning forward and yelling out, you. A few hand signs and the Jonin summons storm clouds with thunder and lightning. Fear and concern can be seen on the team's faces, Naruto reaches into his pockets pulling out Kanai and pointing them at the ropes binding his teammates behind him. You broke the rules, and now I hope you're ready to face the consequences. Sakura through her fear was trying to speak, BBB but you said. Yes, Kakashi prompts, you said we needed to work together, and the last person and we expected to help did. Frowning back at Sakura, Naruto wasn't sure if that was an insult or not. That's right, Naruto has taught us to break the rules a little to accomplish our goal, we couldn't have beat you without his help. Sasuke, determined as always, stares down the Jonin waiting to see how this all plays out. Naruto is the last to chime in, all for one and one for all, or some crap like that. All for one huh, is that your excuse? Kakashi's stern voice make all three tense slightly and then the Jonin says, hmm, you pass. The pause of shock was so long that a gust of wind had time swirl some leaves behind them. Sakura's puzzled look was almost hilarious, she asks, we passed, how did that happen? Well you were right, Naruto was the last person I think any of us were expecting to help out. But you were the first team to succeed in my test, all the others did everything I told them to do and couldn't think for themselves. A ninja must see through deception, and in the ninja world those who break the rules are considered scum. That is true, but those who would abandon their friends, are worse than scum. Realization dawns on each of them that they have won, they passed and now were real ninja. The exercise is over, everyone passes, Squad 7 has its first mission tomorrow. Let's all go home, he turns to walk away and Naruto holsters his kunai and follows. And as the two walk away Sakura calls out, Hey wait a minute you two, come back here and untie you 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 ssss. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.